we're back and look this is episode one from the new studio and we thought we should come out with a banger of a guest so we are very very happy to welcome to the new studio jeans right here in austin texas the great Cobra Tate. Oh my God. Cobra Tate's here, everybody. I don't understand why everyone. I'm the first guest of the new studio. You know I like two coffees. I'm sitting here with one. One. That's fucked up, man. But we did get you sparkling water. Yeah, we didn't get you poor people water. Okay, all right. You know, it's not so bad. Yeah. But it's been a long flight. Two coffees would have been nice. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, guys, get the fuck on it. Unprompted, you dicks. Yeah. Clean. Clean up. But you know, but you know, I say these things and people really genuinely think I'm crazy. Yeah. But I, I, I mean everything I say. That's <laughs> what I love about you, is that you really are just not afraid to say. He's a maverick. Yeah. I'm a maverick. Yeah, that's exactly what I am. I'm yeah. hard to kill. Yeah. Like, yeah. like Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Steven, he's a maverick. He's, he's Steven a maverick. Seagal. He gets on the train. He Aikidos. Yeah. Yes. He does what he has to do. That's me. How am I going to let some, okay, yes, you're a beautiful young lady. Of course, you're a very gorgeous woman. But I'm the big G. Well, you're not going to clean my house. Yeah. Right. Something has to happen. Well, yeah. let's talk about this. This is fascinating because we came across your videos a while ago. and Thank you very much, sir. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Finally. Finally. The fucking God. Jesus. I, I was know. about to walk out the you door. You waited a long time for that. And they I'm were sorry. fueling the jet. I'll have to tell them. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I slow have, down. I apologize on their behalf. So sorry. It's fine, bro. So I am a dumb bitch. How can I not be so stupid and keep my husband i want to keep him happy and i think all the women listening to they want to know the secrets to I'll a good you, relationship i'll tell you the secrets yeah let's, oh. i'm writing them down i'll tell you the secrets oh, oh sure, yeah, put your yeah, yeah let me tell you the secrets yeah, yeah okay. go ahead i'm taking notes. i i don't think most women understand what men are looking for in general from life okay and it's not just relationships it's in general from life i think and when i say think i mean i know that men are biologically designed, we're evolutionarily hardwired to seek status. That's what yes. we want. Men talk about wanting money. You don't want money, you want power. Mm. You want power, you want status, you want the fast car, you don't care about the car. You want everyone to know you have the car and they can't have the car. Right. If everyone had a Lambo, mm. you wouldn't want a Lambo, right? Right. Right. So we want status. So every single thing we do is status driven to some degree. It's true. Meaning the female we are with, mm has to add status to our lives in some form. Mm. That's why we like beautiful women, right? Right. But a beautiful woman who doesn't behave and doesn't obey isn't really much status. Yep. So when we're looking for status, we want a beautiful woman who is compliant because it's unique and it's scarcity that provides value. Right. So if you want to keep your man happy, you need to think, how do I make my man look better to the world? How do I make him look better in front of other men? You know what? If I were to just make him two coffees and shut the fuck up, yeah. he's going to look like the big G and he's going to be in love with me. That's what you have to do but as a woman. Well, let me, let me just stop you real quick and say something. you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> me? Yeah. I brought you two coffees this morning because you were coming in, and I said, Tommy, here's your two coffees. I did. I'm just saying, he made a lot of sense. And just, what are you fucking... Just, I'm just saying, keep taking notes. Don't even talk to me. Keep taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so give me some examples of how I can increase my status, therefore increasing his size. You, you, you mentioned the two coffees. Now, what... Again, why, why do you request that? Let, let's go through the logic of that. Sure. So, yeah. Because it's a basic respect thing, right? And compliance is something which is going to increase the status of your man in front of other people. Right. Compliance. And truthfully, it's not really a very big ask. The fact that it's basically pointless is the whole point of it. Mm -hmm. I drink one. I don't drink the other one. It's just a respect thing. It's doing something which is basically pointless to show you have respect for me. And that's not me being insecure or crazy or whatever. I have a lot of jobs as a man. And I make sure I fulfill my side of the duty fantastically. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. I'm going to take care of us financially, et cetera, et cetera. So if I do my side of the bargain, I want your side of the bargain, which is I want to feel respected in the household. Okay. So, so that's cooking meals, I'm assuming. Well, truthfully, I eat out most of the time. Yeah. But th this is actually one of the problems I have. I want you guys to feel sorry for me. Maybe with your big channel, we can start a charity and get some money going. Because you know what happens now? What? My life, uh, you know, I'm flying on private jets. I'm eating all these restaurants. I'm driving all these supercars. And it's very hard for me to find a way for women to show me right. respect. Because they're just like on the jet, duh. I go oh, to the yeah, restaurant, yeah, yeah. duh. They're in the club, duh. Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Do you so, know what I mean? And they're like, so, and, and most dudes are happy just to get me at pussy. Right. But like, who doesn't want to fuck me? So, yeah. duh. Right. Duh. Duh. So how can so, she, yeah. how can she add, you know? And also too, I worry if I'm too submissive, will he not respect me? Nah, no, 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 no. Get, get rid of that. Get, rid, get of rid of that. Get rid of that stupid that shit. That won't respect oh, wow. me crap. That's not real. Is that yeah. real? Really? I, you know what? So many women say to me, you're so, oh, Andrew, geez. you know what? You're so rich, but you're smart and you're actually very intelligent. And I know you'd get really bored of a, like a robot. And I'm sitting there thinking, bitch, 
I wish to God you're a robot. <laughs> you better shut the fuck up. We talk about star signs? Oh, yeah, I'm so glad. Tell me more about by Sagittarius rising, you idiot. I don't give a fuck. Give me a robot. All men want robots. That's all we want. Yeah. Four wives, robots, inshallah. Put yeah. the... Put the put the burk on. Yep. What are you talking about? We don't care. Two coffees. Yeah. That's yeah. it. It's yeah. nice and easy. There's yeah. no such thing as too submissive. There's no such thing. Yeah. I'm never going to look at a beautiful woman who does everything I say and go, you know what? You do too much of what I say. I want to go get some disagreeable bitch. Yeah, exactly. Wow. On one See, planet. But Cobra, let me tell you what you're saying. If there's truth to it, and judging by my husband's reaction, yeah. listen, we've had world famous comedians sit across from him. He's never spit coffee out of his nose like well, he just did for you. It's because it's it's like you know what it is. Sometimes you see these videos of these guys that are lost, and then they walk into a church, and then the <laughs> the, the preacher says like the exact right thing from the Bible, and the guy's like, "Oh my God, I, this is what I needed." Yeah. I feel the same way right now. I feel like yeah. I love to hear that, friend. Yeah, I love to hear that. Good. Thank it's you. It's really good to have you here. And what speaking, is happening? speaking. If I could be, I don't know, uh, to borrow from them, I think you're kind of speaking the gospel right now. Well, the know? truth is, you know what's crazy about all of this? Because when people attack my views, what they don't understand is that the relationships I'm describing are not just perfect for the man. Women are absolutely happy serving a man they respect. Women are absolutely happy saying, you know what? I know I have the best man on the planet, and I know I make him happy. Women are happy yeah. with that. Yeah, that's true. They're far more happy with that than they are working some fucking career. Yeah. And some garbage. Oh, I have thoughts and opinions and a job. Yeah, shut so the bullshit. fuck up. Shut the up. fuck up. Have kids. Dumb sit bitch. at home. Be quiet. Make coffee. Yeah. And, and it makes everybody happier yep. in the long run. <laughs> it's good for right. everyone. I, I don't know how this is but, even controversial anymore. Right. But, but Cobra, might I interject that if women were truly happy doing that for so long, maybe this whole women's lib thing, how did that come about? That's a psyop from the New World Order. They're deliberately trying to turn women against men. They have to divide the peasants. That's the only way they, the elites can retain control. They turn the blacks against the whites, the Democrats oh. against the Republicans, the women against the men. It's all a psyop, and they do it purposefully. Listen, a revolution is nothing more than men standing in one place and saying this shit has to change. The reason there's no revolution, despite the absolute tyranny we experience here in the Western world, is because most men aren't allowed out, out the house because their wife will get mad at them. You have to be home at 10 o'clock. Come home. Yeah. You're not allowed out. But what, what about the kids? Uh, should he be home? Sure, sure, you should be home for your kids. But my point is, you're not going to feel like a king or feel brave enough to go and re rebel against the new world order if you right. don't even feel in charge of your own house. That's, there's if you're not a king in your that. own house, then how are you a king anywhere else, right? And, and the law is set up in a way in the don't Western world. Like that. The law is set up in a way in the Western world where men have absolutely zero power. Most men are, are clinically depressed, working jobs they hate for, in sexless marriages. And they know they can't leave because they lose the house and they lose the kids and they lose everything else. So they don't have t time to be concerned with anything that's actually happening in the world. They keep mm. us divided and distracted. And empowering females is the easiest way to weaken the will of men. Mm. What happened when, you con when the Romans conquered the Greeks? The first thing they did was kill all the fighting age males. And we live in a world now where they are deliberately killing the fighting age males. They're killing the spirit, the warrior spirit inside of men. And they're doing that by motivating men, sorry, motivating females and empowering them to the point where they're going to sit there and go, you know what? I'm a feminist. You can't tell me what to do. I'm allowed to go out with my friends. He's just my friend. I'm allowed to sleep at his house and drink vodka. Oh, I only sucked his dick. What's the problem? You know what? Fine. We get a divorce. I'm taking the fucking house. Yeah. It's bullshit. Yeah. Yep. How do you feel about women serving in the military and stuff like that? I think that's the biggest mistake a female could possibly make. Why the fuck would you do that? Yeah. One, 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 you're shit at it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like any, anyone who's out here who's actually been through something as I have knows that when the fight goes down, you need the women protected in a way. You don't need the screaming in your ear. Right. So yeah. there's shit at it. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. And the second thing, it's, it's part of the psyop. They're, they're mm. masculine. In the Western world, they're trying to turn females masculine. It's not an accident. None of this is an accident. All of this is done very, very purposefully. And it's to, it's to destroy the will of man. The reason I feel compelled to say the things I say and do the things I do, etc., is because I live in a country where there's no femme-centric government that's going to come and destroy me. And also in my relationships with females, there's no woman telling me, Andrew, just put the mask on. Andrew, just be quiet. <laughs> Andrew, it's late. Don't lose your job. Andrew, the kids, blah, blah, blah. They're just, they're just sucking men down so, the, the pit. So, so hold yeah. on. Do you mean to tell me that Cobra Tate will not be married, will not be tamed? It's not about being tamed or married. I, I don't believe in marriage in terms of an institution, not because I am against the idea of loving a woman, but I'm so anti-government. I don't want them to have anything to do with me, especially where my dick goes. So mm. fuck them. Yeah. So I refuse to sign the piece of paper because I just don't want to deal with governments more. Okay. So, so there won't be a Mrs. Cobra Tate. You, but no, if I, listen. 
if I meet a woman and I I point. Yeah. You. you. She's Mrs. Coco Point. Yeah. yeah. I don't need the government to give me any kind of fucking approval. Have you met a woman yet that you go, you Mrs. Mean, that's Coco. all I fucking do. What are you talking wow. about? I'm just... Pump. Bump, wow. bump. You got a sister, bitch? Bump. Bump. Wow. Like, what the, you think I'm playing games? Do you, do you, you think ever, I'm playing games? Do you ever worry that uh, a woman wow. just uh, is with you for the wrong reasons, and therefore, yeah. do you ever hide how successful you are? You know what I mean? Like, just to see, like, what happens when, like, the Lambo's in the in the garage. It, and... it, that's a good question, and and I think you have to look at it under a different frame. Okay. If if she's ju- if she's only with me because I am tall, strong, rich and successful mm-hmm. and smart and in- and interesting and charismatic and only. humble and funny. Yeah. And funny. Yep. If she's only with me for those things and I'm only with her cuz she's beautiful and shuts the fuck up, who's more shallow? Um Truth. you. So who cares? Right. Right? So I'm not going to be gold dug cuz I'm not an idiot. Like I'm not no girl's going to come to me and say give me money. Yeah. If I decide to buy her a present for her birthday, it's my prerogative. Right. I'm not stupid. I'm not a punk. But I think that this whole idea of shallow is kind of hard to define, right? Some go, they're only with you because you're rich and tall and gorgeous. I'm like, well, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what else are they going to be with me for? Like, right, duh, right. I'm only with her because she's gorgeous too. Yeah. So, like, so, it's normal. That, that's human nature. So hold on, though. Have you had a serious relationship? I, but I, I have many concurrent serious relationships oh, wow. as we speak. Are you poly? No, because that means they can talk to other dudes. That's fucking haram. That's atrocious. That's disgusting. Yeah. Throughout, is, throughout, agreed. Throughout the majority of yeah. human history, Ugh. female promiscuity has been absolutely frowned upon. Only in the Western world we're going to pretend it's an okay thing. Every <laughs> single culture since the dawn of human time and every single place on the planet has said that female promiscuity is disgusting <laughs> to the point where females were executed for it. Yeah. And most of the world today... As they should be. Get the rocks. Yeah. Abdul? Yeah. Get the rocks. Get the rocks. Yeah. In most of the world today, it's still frowned upon. It's unacceptable. Yeah. Whereas every single king and sultan and sheikh since the dawn of human time had multiple women. Men are allowed multiple women. Women are not allowed multiple men. Because if a woman has multiple men, you cannot ensure paternity. And the modern science of the devil, just because we can work out how the dad is, doesn't mean the actions are acceptable. That's, in the will that's of, true. Under the, word of, under the will of God. I can walk and have ten, I can walk and have ten wives behind me. That's sure. perfectly acceptable. So hold if on. a woman has ten men, it's disgusting. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> vile. Yeah. Females should not talk to any 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 man besides her brothers, her father, and the man she's with. I, if she truly loves me, she should want as much help as possible to cater to me and serve me it's, and make me coffee. She should encourage me to get more wives. Amen. Sounds like Sharia law is your wait, so so I'm a Christian. Have you ever <laughs> but have you ever well how what's the longest you've been in a monogamous situation? Monogamous? With lady? Monog- no. So wait, no. wait. You mean her being monogamous to me or me being monogamous to her? Uh, the latter. Ever I, happened? Will it ever happen? I don't see the point. I don't see the advantage. Children. I can have children with, while fucking another bitch. Watch me. Uh, but here's the deal, man. But they will drain your finances. Multiple baby <laughs> mamas. No. He's got Nobody it. drains my finances. Okay. I'm the big G. I don't think you understand. So you cannot understand. drain the big G's finances. The yeah. biggest mistake you could possibly make, the biggest mistake a female could possibly make is trying to go to war with me. She <laughs> could come and say, please, can I have this? The baby needs diapers, whatever. Maybe. Okay, fine. Maybe. But if you were to, yeah, maybe. <laughs> that little fucker can shit on the floor for free. Yeah. But if you're going to come to me with like a legal letter or something, oh, you're going to get crushed. Decimated. Decimated. Oh my God. I'm petty. I'm terrified and I'm rich. of you. Yeah. I will do anything it takes to not pay you. I'll, I'll go to the jungle. I'll burn it all. I'll sit there broke myself. Well, everyone's going to starve. I'm that guy. Yeah. Do you ever get sweet with a lady? I'm when sweet you're, now. When you're... What do you mean? I am do you, sweet. Do you ever, um, you know, is there ever like a tender, if, if, if I, you know, you, you know, you, with a lady alone, are you, is there ever a toned down Ab- version absolute, of this guy? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not that I'm some psycho and I don't believe that men and women should be in love. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I should be allowed to have a bunch of chicks and do whatever I want. And she should obey. And if she, and if she will do that, then I absolutely will love her. Why wouldn't I? Right. Uh, love is a real thing. And love is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Maybe I'm just so full of love. I need more than one woman. Maybe to I think that's really you're, the case. And you're such a virile man that one. Hey, you have to lean into the mic more, my love. Sorry, push sorry. it towards you. Uh, you're too virile, too virile to be tied down. Well, it's just I. I just don't see the advantage. I really do believe that if any man, this is a, a red pill most people don't want to accept. But if any man, if you were to get any man on the planet and say to him, "You have a wife and she loves you and she's going to remain loyal to you and you can still fuck around with other women." Wow. 
Do huh. you want that? Yes or no? If any man's honest, he's going to say yes. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> it's the game. So yeah, I, I, I'm in a fortunate enough situation where yeah. I managed to pull it off, right? I don't, I don't pull it off with money or anything else. I just, I meet beautiful young ladies who look at me and go, you know what, Andrew, you're such a special individual. You're yeah. such an amazing character that I accept. It's like when, all right. Yeah. You, you like cars, don't you? Yeah. All right. If you buy a McLaren, you accept that half the time it's going to fucking break for no reason. It's just a pain in the ass. If you want something reliable, you get a Toyota. If you want something sexy as fuck that comes with a bunch of problems, you get a McLaren. I'm the McLaren. You chose you me, bitch. You are the McLaren. You chose me. Yeah. You, I'm not going to act like a Toyota. I'm the McLaren. So <laughs> you, you're just going to have to accept what comes with me. Yeah. You are a McLaren. That's yeah. really good. That's accurate. It's a good analogy. No? It is yeah. a really good analogy. I, I use that to Romanian bitches don't even speak English. Like, <laughs> McLaren? Like, yes, bitch. McLaren. <laughs> That's all they now, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your, can I ask you this? Cause there's a lot of, this is a, you know, a primarily male audience yep. and a lot of them, you know, they look for guidance. They look to the, some of the guests that have spectacular careers. A lot of them, you know, are like, Hey, I need a little bit of help. Like I'm a little lost. What's mm -hmm. like your advice to a guy who's whatever, he could be coming out of university or in his 30s, but he's like looking for a little direction. How do you how do you start off, get centered to become successful, you know, get money, get bitches? Like how, what would you tell them? That's a, I can answer that question in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. It's like 10 different answers I can give. But I think truthfully in the world we're living in now, I use this analogy a lot, maybe I overuse it, but you need to find a way to some degree to escape the matrix. Mm -hmm. And I and I say the matrix because the matrix, the way it is designed and You're now, not just talking shit because you've actually done that. <laughs> I've escaped the matrix. Yeah. I've literally escaped the matrix in nearly every form. So any form of oppression no longer applies to me. I'm uncanceled. I can't be canceled. No, I can say what I want. My finances are secure. I've escaped the matrix. And when I talk about the matrix, it primarily applies to men because men are the backbone of the slave force. We always have been and always will be. And unfortunately now, if you're a law abiding man inside the matrix, your future and the life that is laid out for you is nothing but depressing. You're going to go to school. You're going to get in debt. You're going to get a job. You're going to get a wife. Divorce is coming. You're going to lose the house eventually. Your job's shit. Inflation's outpacing your wages. You're going to work, work, work. No one's going to appreciate it. Now you're old and your life's over. That is the matrix for 99% of men. And you need to find a way to escape it. And I guess I was kind of fortunate from a young age. I always knew that the matrix was coming and that the system is designed to oppress. The people who make the rules do not make the rules for the benefit of us. They make the rules for the benefit of the people who make the rules. And I knew that. And I think every person intrinsically knows that. Like if it's four in the morning and you're sitting in a gas station and a Lambo pulls up, you're probably thinking drug dealer or criminal. You're not thinking, oh, he definitely went to school. Yeah. No, yeah. You know, so everyone true. knows this, right? That's true. So you have to find a way to escape the matrix to some degree. Well, wait, let me stop you. When you say you intrinsically knew this, a lot of, I feel like a lot of people would, would assume that somebody is giving you some guidance too. Like, did you have somebody that was, you know, I mean, kind of laying some of this out to you, like a male figure that was informing you a bit yeah I, I i was lucky enough to have the most fantastic father on the planet there so my so my dad did make a lot of things very clear to me from a young age my father was a chess grandmaster yeah and he was a he was a nomadic individual so he lived in a car or in random hotels and floated around the world playing chess and these these chess grandmasters are all like so smart that that becomes like a common thing they're they're so smart that they're socially weird yeah, yeah. so like my father was socially strange but he was a genius. And on top of that, he's like a six foot four black dude. So it's very unusual, like a chess grandmaster, but he's also physically intimidating. Yeah. But he's also socially weird. So he's a kind of weird guy to be around. Yeah. But he was nomadic and uh, he was just hustling. Sometimes he'd have to go down the, the local chess park and just hustle for, for dollars to eat. Mm. And other times he's beating grandmasters for 20, 30 grand paychecks. So it's kind of, it was an interesting life. And he taught me a lot about the fact that the system is absolutely broken. It's designed to oppress and that the majority of people who stick to the rules are gonna lose. I, I don't wanna sit here on a podcast that goes out to this many people and encourage anyone to break the law in any form. Of course. But the idea of the law abiding citizen has been decimated in real time. In the last two, two, three years ago, you could stand there and proudly say, I'm a law abiding citizen. The last two years, if they have not taught you that being a law abiding <laughs> citizen is gonna ta turn you nothing into a fucking experiment for big pharma, then you're an idiot. You can no longer obey the law. You, you, and I'm not saying you have to break the law, but you need yeah. to find a way to do what the elites do, which is bend the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can no longer sit there and go, I'm just going to follow the rules and it's going to be okay. No, it isn't. I and if you're a man, so. and if you're a man, 
It's your job to find a way to not be sticking to those rules enough to escape the matrix and become free. Because what's actually most crazy about this period of history is that it's actually the easiest time in human history to become rich. And the reason for that is because there's so many people inside the matrix being destroyed. Money has to go somewhere. I've made so much money during COVID. It's absolutely incredible, right? Yeah. And, and and a whole bunch of people got lucky. They buy a crypto coin. It fucking goes up 100x and this kind of crap. That's like, there's money just flowing around may, the world. May I ask, because the audience, will, you know, we've been following you. Um, and how how do you generate your income? Are right. you fighting? So, we know you're a fighter. I was a fighter. So there's there's my two primary sources. I have three primary sources of income. Wait, three, four. I'm, t- I'm thinking of which ones I'll tell you about. Yeah. Four. I have four primary sources <laughs> of income that I'm prepared to disclose to the world. Sure, okay. sure. Go ahead. The first thing is I own some casinos in Romania. Fantastic. The, the story of how I opened them is, is long, but I'll make it very, very short. There was a guy who owns 400 casinos, three brothers, mafia guys. They own 400 casinos throughout Eastern Europe. I came up to him and said, look, I want to do a franchise with you. They said, we're not interested in franchises. We have enough money. We just opened them ourselves. We turn over 10 million euros a day. Why do I need your franchise? Eventually, I came up with a plan. And I said, look, how about this? I'll open up your locations directly next to your biggest competitor. So I'll go to war for you next to the competitor. Worst case, the location doesn't pay any money, but at least it takes money from your competitor. I'll give you a percentage of turnover. So even if it doesn't make profit, you make money. I'll take all the financial risk. They agreed. I started opening up next to their biggest competitor. I actually did something that's kind of funny. What I tried to do was find ones in between their competitor and a Starbucks. I'd open in the middle and then I'd offer loads and loads of free coffee with a barista (laughs) and a sexy chick. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to Starbucks, you could just take your money, go get free coffee and gamble. And nice. I ended up making a bunch of money. I took his competitor down, bang, bang, bang. So I opened them up. That's the first thing. That's the first one of the first ways I made money. That's what's Good up, business. Dude. Yeah, that's all right. tight. Yeah, yeah. yeah, do that. Second, my brother, my brother runs a company that manages girls on OnlyFans. So a female without instruction is headed for destruction. Women are intrinsically lazy. Yep. Intrinsically. If you show a man how to make $1,000 in an hour, he'll think, I can make $24,000 a day. If you show a woman how to make $1,000 in an hour, she'll think, I only have to work three hours a week. Because they are fucking lazy. Stupid yeah. bitches. <laughs> lazy. Yeah. Those are entitled and fucking lazy. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So my brother comes yeah, along. Yeah, you just had that on deck. Yeah. Good job. My, so my brother comes <laughs> along and says, listen, you're making a little bit of money. You're a fine Caucasian of the wrong persuasion. The men think you're handsome. They should pay your ransom. We're going to change it up. You're going to listen to me. I'm going to install some structure and some discipline in your fucking life. Yeah. And you're going to make some real money. And I'm going to get a percentage. So my brother runs an OnlyFans agency. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. So the, my brother's making 200 grand a month from OnlyFans. Casino's making more than that. And then I've got an a online school, actually, called Hustlers University. I have a university online. And really? I, I, yes. And I teach people how to make money with 18 modern wealth creation methods. So this, wow. That's, oh, okay. that's cool as shit. So how can somebody sign up for that? That is on CobraTate.com. Uh, you can see it. It's called Hustlers University. It's $49 a month. Mm. And, and I teach 18 modern wealth creation methods on how to make money. And I do this not because I'm a philanthropist. I want everyone to understand this is not philanthropy. I'm not trying to be a nice guy and I'm certainly not trying to make money. But I believe, I genuinely believe we're living in a pivotal period of human history. Yeah. I believe that things are going to about to get a lot worse before they get yes. better. And I believe that anyone who thinks like me and is aligned with me and understands about the global enslavement, if they're going to be on my team, I want them to be rich. Money gives you power. So I am teaching anybody who will listen to my videos and understand what I'm saying and doesn't hate me how to make as much money as possible because when the time comes and the battle call is made, I need rich people around me. That's what Hustlers University is about. So it's right there. We teach everything about how to make money from cryptocurrency, e-commerce, Can a woman sign up for this? Anybody. Oh, a woman can do this. I uh, will allow females into my program for the moment. Women fucking stupid well That's yeah right. yes <laughs> they struggle with the reading and the work you know they're I was like, gonna say they're like, they can mm-hmm. read. <laughs> but they try their very best yeah yeah if they're hot they can get a private class oh, yeah. okay but otherwise fuck them <laughs> so that's hustles university i teach 18 modern wealth creation <laughs> methods there's me and there's 17 other professors in there teaching how to make money. It's only $49 a month. We have about 6,000 students. So that's wow. doing well. So you are making some real money, man. I'm, 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 I'll am I'm, be honest. I say I make $2 million a month, something like that. Wow. Yeah. That's Fantastic. a really good, it's a good living. Good I do all right. You. I do yeah. all right. And then I also have the last thing I'll talk about is the war room. And the war room is my own secret society. What's that? It's a secret society. Like Illuminati type shit? Correct. So the war room is for men who... The Hustlers University is about money and the war room is about everything else outside of money. It's for everything that is not money. If you, once you start making money, you realize there's so much more to life than money. If you need to go to Moscow during a lockdown and you need a business visa, who do you call? You call the war room. 
right? Yeah. It's it's one of those things. So we have a secret society. We operate all around the world. We have over 3,000 members in 72 countries. No, no bitches is allowed in this. No though. females. No. Fuck no. At, yeah, fuck no. I see all those cigars. Girls don't, yeah. Do, do you uh, suck dick on demand? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you know why I smoke cigars? Why? Because no. they raise your testosterone level. Really? Hey, man, I smoke cigars. I didn't too. even know that. I, look, I have a friend right away. Yeah. Here I was thinking I was going to be under fire. Yeah. Turns out I made friends in, in Texas. This oh, is amazing. No. Tom loves you. Oh, he's, perfect. He's nodding his head. His neck is practically going to break. Yeah. He's like, yeah, buddy. Yeah, you, leave, you leave tonight, right? Uh, they're fuel in the jet. I mean, okay. when I first got here, I had the one coffee. I said fuel the jet. Now, now, the, now the jet's the, the fuel's going in, so I'm probably gonna have to bounce. Yeah, but, that's too bad. Well, yeah. It's too bad. That's a shame. I know. Yeah, yeah. man. But, but um, I'll be around. Like I'm around the world. I'm here. I'm there. I'm around. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm around. But anyway, sorry for ranting on and on about the global enslavement of man. But I, you know what? No, no, I'm not fucking sorry for anything. Yeah. Of I, I, if you're a man, <laughs> if you're a man with any level of testosterone level, and yeah. you've been witnessing what's been happening in the world in the last two years. I struggle to sleep at night. Like literally what's happening is fucking crazy. And I'm struggling to sleep. And I'm a I'm an individual with fifty million dollars who can hide and disappear. If I was Joe Schmo, I'd be I'd be scared. You're yeah. out here, they're lying to you about the inflation rate. You're you're not getting a pay rise. Like what where's your panic? Yeah. People are not panicking. They lack perspicacity. Ooh, They're not paying attention to anything. Google perspicacity. Type? It's the ability to be perceptive. Oh, shit. And, and they're not paying attention to anything. And they're just sitting there waiting for the fucking steamroller. You think in 10 years from now, things are going to be better? Mm -hmm. Like, what's out of your, you out of your fucking mind? Mm. You need to prepare for this. And the whole idea of prepping in the old traditional sense of buying a bunch of food and hiding in the forest and the cabin in the woods, that ain't going to work either. Mm. You need a global network. You need a secret society. You need places you can hide. You need money, and you need the ability to bounce. That's what you need. That's what I have, right? But I don't know how fucking Joe Schmo's even functioning in society nowadays. Because I would be, I'd be furious. I'd be like, "What the fuck? You tell me inflation seven percent? That's a lie." So you feel like those are, uh, most of those people are just not like alert. They're not awake, right? They're just kind of following along. We suffer. the The modern world suffers from the from a, a bout of cowardice. The, the average man in the world today is just a fucking coward. It's not that he doesn't pay attention. It's not that he doesn't know. Yeah. It's that if he pretends it isn't there, it's ostrich shit. Yeah. I'm just going to hide. Oh. I don't know what to do, so I want to hide from it. It can't possibly be true. No, they can't possibly have lied about that. Oh, no, boy. no. It's all cowardice, right? Yeah. Because you're a coward. Because when you accept the realities, now you're, you need to do something. You're implored to act. Yeah. They don't mm -hmm. want that. So we're suffering from a massive... We're suffering from a massive pandemic of cowardice that's the only pandemic in the world today i see it men say it all the time well it's not that bad you know it's that bad you're just too pussy to admit it because you mm -hmm. don't know what to fucking do about it you that's the thing though is that they don't know what to do they don't know what to do yeah well i'll tell them what to do join hustlers university get some money join the war room prove yourself amongst a society of men which are doing something look we're not breaking any laws fucking fbi you can join as much as you want all we're doing is we're <laughs> sitting around men who understand i'm a chess player right my father was a chess player I truly have no intention of changing the world. I have no political affiliation. I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I'm not right. I'm not left. I don't believe in changing the rules of the game. I believe in winning. Mm. In chess, when you look at the board, you don't sit there and go, I'm losing. I wish a pawn could move that way. That's stupid because yeah. that's not the game. Right. What I do believe in saying is, okay, I'm fucked, but what's the best possible move? Yes. And what you'll actually notice is a grandmaster, you play a grandmaster at chess, he is sticking to the same rules as you. He's within the same constraints, but he will destroy you because he has a better understanding of the rules. I'm not out to change any rules. My society is not out to change any rules. The society can stay exactly as it is, can be as corrupt as it is. Don't give a fuck. I'm not, I, I have no political affiliation. I don't care who's president. Don't care. All I care about is analyzing the chessboard and making the most intelligent move for myself and my people. Well, life is too short for you to change the whole system. You're not going to do it in this lifetime or the did next. Your, so. By the way, did your father teach you how to play? Yes. Oh, so that no must shit. have been a crazy. Yeah, but I'm, but I'm experience. still. Yeah, it is. But you know what? What's truth? It was. It's kind of upsetting to some degrees. I'm still crap. Like I'm good, <laughs> but I'm shit. Right. Because right, like right. I'm, I could, I could play any normal person and smoke them. Yeah. Uh, in Elo and chess terms, I'm around 1800. I don't know if anyone knows what that is. Mm -hmm. But my father was a master. He was like 2500, and uh, it's amazing how good these people are at chess. My father used to beat me at chess from the other room. Wow. So I'd, he, I'd have the board. He'd be cooking dinner. I'd say E4, C5, Knight F3, Knight C6, and just read it out while cooking dinner and smoke without looking wow. at a chessboard. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. And then when you moved to the UK, though, because I'm interested in this, you got into kickboxing, right? You got into to fighting. Well, it's a logical jump, no? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. I'm most most chess guys, you're like, I don't want to fuck with this guy. He'll kick my ass. <laughs> uh, but like, how did you, how did you stumble into fighting? I lost my chess coach because my father stayed in America, mm -hmm. so I lost my chess coach, and I decided to um, do something that's similar. And to me, chess is war. Kickboxing is war. It's one on one. There's no luck. There's no team that's there to help you or save you. And you have to be ruthless. Mm -hmm. You have to crush your opponent absolutely. And also another thing about chess and fighting that's completely the same is if you lose, somewhere you made a mistake. There's no luck involved. Right. It doesn't matter how good you were doing. There's no such thing as a lucky punch. If he catches you and you go, he's training to punch people in the face. And he just punched you in the face. Yeah. There's no such thing as a lucky punch. Yeah. If you lose at some point in life, I was about to apply it to life. If you lose at some point in chess, you made a mistake. If you lose in fighting at some point, you made, fighting, you made a mistake. And in life, I believe if you lose at some point in life, you got complacent, you made a mistake. Even with a complete black swan event like COVID, if you're going to allow yourself to be completely decimated and you did not have any kind of preparation plan mm -hmm. or any kind of network that could help you or any kind of moves to make, you made a mistake. So mm -hmm. I, I, I apply that. So when I couldn't play chess anymore, I thought, well, everything I love about chess, I can find in fighting. So I started mm. beating people up. Did you figure <laughs> out, because fighting is one of those things that's interesting, you, you know, the younger you start, the better chance you have. So, yeah. um, but then it's kind of one of those, like it, with most athletics, you figure out pretty quickly whether you have a skill for it. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. could try something, you're like, oh, I'm just average at this. Were you a natural fighter? I was good at it right yeah, away. Right away. Yeah, I started when I was like 17. Um, I had, I've had 87 fights, a lot of fights. Yeah. Um, have you broken someone's bones? Have I broken someone's bones? I've broken a bunch of bones. How does that feel? Great. Yeah. yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. No, seriously, like, I'm being I don't, serious. I don't the first fuck. time you broke somebody's <laughs> bones, were you like, like, was it rad? Was it like a hunter when they kill a big moose? No, you, you, know, like, no, you know what it is. So there's a video, if you can actually find it, if you go to YouTube and you look in my highlight reel, there's a video of me fighting in Macedonia in the World Championships. I was representing the USA, and I fought a German fighter. If you type into uh, to YouTube, Andrew Tate highlights, it will come up. And there's me against a German guy. Mm -hmm. And when I knocked him out badly... Seeing him on the floor was, that's it, the top one. Seeing him on the floor, you'll scroll through, you see a guy in German shorts. Seeing him on the floor was kind of cool. <laughs> but you know what was much cooler? Seeing the look on his wife's face. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, no. Because I know she left him. <laughs> well, you just saw your man get beaten the fuck out of. Yeah. Well, you, you, well, you're going to suck his dick. No. There we go. Here we go. So watch, in, in about uh, 45 seconds from here, you'll see. But, yeah, it's primal. Like, once you've done fighting, you can't beat anybody at anything else because, oh, I beat him at basketball. Well, who fucking cares? A yeah. ball on the net. Like, who gives a shit, right? Beating a dude up is different. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it, it kind of destroys all other sports because everything else is boring Absolutely. In yeah. But then a fight, the fight is, yeah. like, it's primal. It's the... Here we go. Here like we you go. said, there's, there's nothing... There you go. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. Yeah, dude. Look yeah. at his strut. Did you see well, his yeah. strut? Dude? But you also... The walk away is the best, dude. Yeah, yeah. fuck him. Yeah. Like, Boom. Pussy. <laughs> Yeah. Now when I go to Germany, they tell me to put the vaccine. You need your vaccine passport. I'm like, listen, you didn't see what I do the last fucking Germany. Talk shit. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I mean, you know what's funny as well? Because money protects me. Let me tell you, I was in Munich. And the police are walking around. Mask, mask, mask. I pull up to the Kapinski in a fucking Fer Ferrari 812 super fast. I walk, in, I walk in the reception. Sir, would you like a mask? No, I would not. Thank you. Keep walking. And, and I know it's that money protects you, right? When you're a big dude walking with confidence, pulling up in a $300,000 car, staying in the penthouse, they're more scared to tell you to do things than if you're just Joe Schmo. I know they shouldn't be, but they are. They are. The yeah. staff are like, oh, who the fuck's that guy? I'll just let him. He doesn't wear one. Just a, but yeah. the average person, they're over there, mask, 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 yeah, mask. Yeah, yeah. Me and my brother, we've walked around and broke every single fucking COVID restriction since the dawn of this shit. <laughs> All of it. We just walk around saying, make me. I'll call the police. Call them. By the time they get here, I'm, I'm bouncing. I'm gone. I, was in, I walked into a fucking coffee shop in Germany. I was like, bro, latte. He goes, you need a mask. I said, there's only you and me in here. Are you scared of COVID? He goes, no, but it's the rules. I said, have Germans not yet learned about blindly complying with governments? <laughs> Do you have it? Have you read a history book? No. Oh, but, but, but the, I said, there's no police here. Stop shitting yourself. What are you afraid of? Yeah. But you're such a fucking coward. Make my coffee. No wonder you're a barista, you pussy. <laughs> fucking unbelievable. 
I had to cuss this German guy out, tell him he's a bitch. Get back in the fucking McLaren. <laughs> Get a drive through coffee. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. That is insane. It's fucking insane. It's insanity. It's, and, 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 it's, and it's just male cowardice. And by the way, you are so right about any time. You don't even have to be wealthy to do this. If you walk through a place with your shoulders back and your head high, you yep. could, it doesn't matter, and you just walk with purpose. Yep. Anybody who tries to give you an instruction, if you're just like, I don't think so, yeah. then there'll be most of the time they'll be like, okay, I'm not supposed to talk to that person. Ninety nine percent of the time, and yeah. that's how all this shit ends. I said this to someone. Said to, someone came to me and said, "What do we actually do about this?" I said, "Listen, don't get kicked off flights. Don't get put on no fly list. No, yeah. if you have to wear a mask, wear a mask." My argument is very simple: don't put one on first. Make them have to come and tell you. Then say, "I don't have one." Make them go and get one. Make them go and bring it back. Then hang it off your ear and still don't wear it. Sir, over your mouth and nose. Okay, then put it on your chin. And, and just make it so fucking difficult. Yeah. If everyone did that, they'd give up. But no, I see all these good little slaves before they even go in the store finding a mask in their car. Do, 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 do. I wonder why I'm broke. Because you live inside the slave system. You're living in the slave mine. Dude. You're a peon, a peasant. You're an ant in the fucking ant farm. You don't think for your fucking self. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. But, but the slaves, the slave mentality feels empowered now by canceling people they're envious of, by commenting and wanting to silence people that have an opinion. Correct. So now that, but that is a form of power. Now oh, the oh, slaves have united. But this is what's dangerous about the world. This is what people don't understand. And this is what my society discusses always is that throughout history, the, the, way, the way humanity got here is that it was the biggest, strongest alphas of society that were in charge of society. Yes. We now live in a world where it's the beta male tech programmers that rule the world. Uh -huh. And if you give a bunch of betas power, they're going to abuse it worse than anybody. Have you ever given a weak man power? You see what they do with it? Because mm. they've never felt powerful. You can give me power. We talk about all the shit I do with women on a serious level, right? If a woman trusts me and she gives me power over her in a relationship, I'm going to take care of her in every single way. I'm not going to fucking abuse her. I felt powerful my whole life. I kicked the shit out of dudes. I'm not going to hit a chick. Yeah. Why would I, right? right? You give a beta male power, look what they do. Because mm -hmm. they've never felt powerful. And men have a nat natural masculine imperative for power. Everything we discussed earlier. We talked about men want status, right? So you give weak men power, they're going to exploit it. And the weakest members of society are now becoming the most powerful members of society. And they can control fucking information. It's the end of the world. This is the end of the fucking world. This is not a joke. This is the end of the fucking world. Well, it's the feminization of the world. Absolutely. So, so this is the going to be, now it's the era of feelings. Everybody's feelings matter. And like you said, the beta male is coming to power. So what's going to happen? Well, what do you see I'll tell happening? you, the feminization of the world is absolutely destructive to the Western world because there's never been a successful matriarchy in the history of humanity. No, There's not true. What about England? England. No, Queen no. Queen Victoria. Having a female in charge is different than a matriarchy. When I talk about matriarchy, I mean, on average, in the household, the man was in charge. On average, men were in charge of the society on average. You could have a female head of state. But on average, it was the men who were ruling society. The men were in charge of Working and providing. Women yeah, the, the women the were listening stuff. to the men on average. Right. That's right. my point, on average. Right, right. right? So I've, I've had this argument with a feminist before. She's like, oh, well, we, we've never tried matriarchies. We've only tried patriarchies, blah, blah, blah. And I said, listen, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they have been tried, but the problem Bitch. is this: the problem is this. Yeah, the closer you are to the base level of survival, mm -hmm. the more people naturally revert to their gender roles. If if we were all if, if if ten men and ten women were on a boat and they got shipwrecked, the men would instantly start shelter, fire, hunting, yes. and the women would start doing the women things. When you get rid of all the crap and all the society and all the programming, people will revert to their gender roles. The reason we do that is because it gives us the best possible chance of survival. That's why in poor countries where survival is harder, people are closer to their natural gender roles. Totally. Right? Totally. So that makes sense as a whole. So this feminist is saying to me, oh yeah, but we've never tried a matriarchy. I said, no, I'm sure it's been tried. The problem is it's very, very difficult to survive under a matriarchy. It's not the natural gender roles. And the matriarchies that did exist in humanity, I'm sure they existed. The reason we don't discuss them is they never even got a chance to create any history because they were fucking decimated by the patriarchies. There is no, what is the statistical odds? Someone at home, some feminist, if you can do some fucking math, you bimbo, work this out. What are the odds of every single society since the dawn of human time all across the planet being run by men? All of them. This is not an idea that could have spread. You had the Aztecs and the Mao dynasty. They didn't fucking talk. These are, this is every single civilization that we can ever possibly name or discover, men were in charge. The reason for that is because all the ones where women were in charge got fucking wiped out because yeah. they're not competitive. So what happens is 
and they lose to patriarchies. So what's going to happen here as we become feminized, as the Western world becomes a matriarchy, as women get more and more influence and power, feminists are fucking walking down the street saying we want the same rights as men. You have more rights than men. There's not a single thing a man can do a woman can't do, but you have a whole bunch of laws in your favor. Yeah. You have more rights than men already. What the, what the fuck are you talking about? And then they say they want to be respected for their ideas, and they get their tits out because nobody gives a shit unless they're naked. So they're fucking dumb. The whole point is... The whole point is that the matriarchy that we are creating in the West is no longer going to be competitive in the long run. We are not going to be competitive. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to say what the competition is, but whatever the competition is, if men retain control, we are going to fucking lose. This is, the world is cyclical. I live in Eastern Europe now, right? Eastern Europe, 20, 30 years ago, shithole. Now is the best place on the planet. Mm -hmm. California, 20, 30 years ago, best place on the planet. Now, shithole. It just takes a long time for reputations to catch up. Yeah. Yep. People are talking about California because they think it's like the 90s. Yeah, Baywatch. Cool. That's gone. That's gone. gone. It's crack watch. Yeah. Homeless watch. Yeah. That's all they got over there now. Tax so watch. Yeah. So, so as the world catches up and as things change, any, any society <laughs> that retains its patriarchal roots is going to outcompete the West. I really do think that the Western world, along with America, is fucking finished. And I think if you have half a brain as a man here in the Western world, you need to get some money. I'll teach you in Hustlers University. Get in a society that understands that and we teach you how to prepare for it. I'm not trying to change it. I'm just trying to make the smartest move on the chessboard. All right. That's pretty well, good stuff. I'm, you know, Hungarian citizenship. Let's go. I, Let's go. Um, See you in Budapest. Yeah. I'd be, That's I've the been, capital of chess, you know. Budapest. I've been here for oh, so I long I that I, uh, oh, cool. I went to California last week and I walked into uh, a place to get a sandwich and I walked in and the lady goes, do you have a mask? And I, I thought that was already Sorry, done. in California? When in California, in LA, yeah. yeah. And they go, do you have a mask? And I was like, no, because I'm used to here. Yeah. And uh, she goes, can you get one? And I was like, from where? <laughs> and she goes, like, from your car? And I was like, I don't have one there either. And she was like, Sigh. and I go, well, I just want to order a sandwich. <laughs> and she was like, but you don't have a mask on. And I'm like, is that a, still a thing? I, I, I honestly yeah, didn't know. Yeah, it still is. And another guy goes, I have one in my car. <laughs> and I was like, he, I was like, will you give it to me? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got, a, I got a fresh one for you. So I go out and I get it and I put it on, and then I come back in, and then the guy there goes, "You don't have to wear that mask." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> so I don't know. It's just like it's mixed messages. It's weird. It's it's more than weird. It's it's testament to the slave mind in so many ways. But I'll give you a perfect example of testament to the slave mind. When I get forced to put a mask on, I put it on my chin, and nobody says anything. They oh, don't give a shit about. The, yeah. They just hang it down here. Yeah. They don't give a fuck about the mask. They just want to see you comply. I'm complying. I'm a slave. You must be a slave with me. Yeah. I don't want to see your free spirit and your rebellion. Yeah. They don't give a shit about the actual safety of COVID. They don't give a fuck about your breathing. They just want to see you comply. Another thing that's all that's always been remarkable to me, and maybe it's because I've never had that matrix mindset, is if I was working a normal job, right? Let's say I worked in a sandwich store, and I'm not shitting on the average guy who does average work. I'm yeah. not doing that at all. Any work is respectable, and it's hard out here to make. I don't give a fuck you carry garbage. It's hard to make money. But if I was working a normal job, as much as I would do my job to the best of my ability, I'd also be very, very understanding of the fact that my job doesn't give a fuck about me. They don't care about me. They never will. If they have to sack me or fire me to keep their business functioning, that's exactly what they're going to do, and they're going to let me starve. So if I was working in a sandwich store and someone came without a mask, I'd be like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, like why the fuck well, do you care? Here's why it's bullshit though. Because uh, here's the thing. I'm not anti <laughs> like I'm pro science and I believe in, you know, whatever like medicine tells us to do. But here's the inconsistency, the, the bullshit of masks is that, you know, even on a flight, right? You have to wear them. Yeah. To, and then they're like, you could take it off to eat and drink. Yeah. So then, so like you can take it off. It's social conditioning. It is. Very we went to a show yeah. Yeah. yesterday and when you get there, they're like, oh, because um, we walk in like this, and they have a, like a little bag with masks. Like, can you, grab, can you grab a mask? And I'm like, okay. So I grab a mask, I put it on, and we walk in the lobby, everyone has masks on, and then you sit in your seat, and they're like, you can take your mask off now. So the, for 10 feet? But you're, you you're around everybody so that was in the lobby, and they're sitting next to you now. But it's, it, they're, So it they, doesn't make they, any they, sense. They are conditioning you to blindly comply. It doesn't yeah, need to course. make sense. It starts in school. It starts at yeah. the desk. Blindly 745, comply. you're out by three. No, no, no. It's it's docile bodies from the minute you're born. Yeah. They, they want slaves yeah, inside the matrix, inside of the machine. They were teaching you to not think for yourself and to blindly comply. It starts with the mask. Yeah. Blindly put the mask on. Blindly get the injections. Blindly, 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 blindly. They don't want you to think. If you think and realize it doesn't make sense, you're no good to them. They don't want you smart enough to think for yourself. They want you smart enough to pay your taxes. And yeah. that's about it. Like yeah. they don't, they don't give a shit. It's really, I use the word slave and people think I'm being dramatic. I'm not being dramatic. 
If you are think, wear, think wearing a, sla- a, a mask for four feet is saving lives, you are absolutely, <laughs> completely a slave. Yeah. You're a slave. You're owned. You're totally owned. And there's so many people out here who are actually genuinely owned. At the height of this COVID nonsense, at the real height of it, the number of times I almost got an almost, and, and there's certain countries I'll behave, on a flight I'll behave, there's certain times, right? But I was in Spain. I'm flexing, doing my thing in the Ferrari, being a G. Yeah. Leave me the fuck alone. Got Spanish, bitch. My yeah. life's fine. Yeah. Pull up to the gas station, put gas in the Ferrari, walk in. Mask, mask. No, I ain't got one. Well, then I won't serve you. So, so the gas is free? Because I'll put gas in. You want money or not? Because I'll leave right now. The gas is free. I call police. I like, fucking call them. So I take the euros and I throw it on the floor. <laughs> get out. Go to get in the fucking Ferrari. Yeah. I'm paid now. Yeah. I'll paid you. Go to get in the Rari. Some guy goes, you should have respect. I said, respect for what? He goes, you're in, you should wear a mask. I said, I don't wear a mask where I'm from. He goes, well, you're in Spain now. I said, your government should have respect for you instead of making you a fucking slave, dickhead. No, you must wear a mask. You must wear a mask. And, and I just said, and this is one of the great things about physical confrontation, which I'm not trying to advocate, but sometimes it's just a very easy way to make people go away. I'm like, bro, do you want to fight me over a fucking mask? Come, come tell me to put a fucking mask on. And he shits himself and walks up. Let's see. So then fuck off. Like, back in the Rari, go fuck the Spanish bitch, conquer their country. That's yeah. right. Spaniards. I took her. She's done with. <laughs> done. I took your prize possession. She's messed up. Whichever Spanish man gets with her next, he'll be like, why is she always starting arguments with me? Why is she never happy? Because she's dreaming of the night she had with me. She's unhappy with you and you'll never be able to please her. She's widowed forever. It's done. <laughs> Fuck you, Spain. That's what you have to tell me to put a fucking mask on. I might go on easy on her pussy if it wasn't for that little fucking Pedro motherfucker coming to me trying to tell me to do shit. That's what happens. That's what happens. That's what happens. That's what happens. Spain's done. What happens. Nobody go there. You might run into her. That's what happens. <laughs> done. She's me- it's a mess. <laughs> yep. Well, don't you feel it's silly? Like, we've had COVID. On top of it, you've traveled the world the whole time. I feel like you've been exposed to every fucking I've strain had of every it. Strain, There's sure. no way. I think like, I have one now. I'm sure yeah. you do. Yeah. Like, Whatever. what the fuck yeah, are we whatever. doing this yeah. for? Like, we've all gotten We're it. doing this for because it's a perfect opportunity for the New World Order to usher in something other than protection and safety. It's, it's always been the same playbook. It's, it's, you know what's really amazing to me? Especially, like, in Romania, I was going on a tour, and I was doing a tour of the country because it's really beautiful, and I was seeing all the nature side that, and I had these two tour guides. They're really nice people, but they're, like, kind of liberal. Though. And they're complying with all this COVID shit, and I said... Don't you understand that if this was the 1930s, you'd literally be the Nazis? Don't you understand that mm. all the, you're thinking, you're thinking back, oh, I'd never would have helped the Nazis. Did a, you're blind compliance. It's the same fucking playbook. You're not thinking for yourself. Does that not cross your mind? And like, oh no, but I know someone who got sick. You've always known people who got sick. Your entire life, you knew somebody who got the cold. Why is that now justification for the absolute decimation of, of your civil rights? It doesn't make sense. The, the, the biggest paradigm shift from all this crap that's actually genuinely dangerous is as humans, we have all for our entire lives walked around spreading antigens to some people. You've, made, you've given someone a cold. You've given oh, someone yeah. a cough. I've given someone the flu. We've always done that. It's been a normal part of human life. We were never seen as bad people for existing and, and, and accidentally passing on a disease, right? Now they've shifted the paradigm. So if you pass on COVID, you're guilty. How the fuck does that work? Yeah. And, and how does that ever end? And how do you ever put an end to this where it's not just deeper and deeper and deeper restrictions and more and more and more control? And, and, and it doesn't even fix anything. It's absolutely incredible that people are not awake enough to see what's fucking happening. Well, because they have such a short memory of history. I mean, literally what you're talking about happened. Uh, my dad's my dad was born at that time yeah. and like it's already been forgotten yeah. communism psh, yeah. forgotten yeah. and where we want the same fucking policies that the communists had this part it's nutty i completely agree but there's also another huge element to all this and it's the perma distraction yeah and this is why when that's I t- always been in america though. people also like to uh say that they've heard enough already about that's one of my favorites yeah you're on, ostrich cowards but they've when they've heard enough about something horrific like when you hear people go like all right with the holocaust yeah you're like, you're like, um, well, kind yeah. of a big we could probably keep talking about it yeah. it's not like it's not a little thing that well, humans are susceptible <coughs> to doing crazy shit like yeah that. of that's course what fucking happened we're going through something similar you know not but, killing people but, but this is the thing when i talk to people about oh, this yeah. there's some people who totally understand and some people who are just so perma distracted and when I was saying earlier about like the women in the household and that kind of thing, I'm not trying to say women can't have opinions, but my point is there's a whole bunch of men out here who genuinely know 
that this COVID shit's out of control. But they're too busy arguing with their wife to do anything about it. Right. They're, they're, they're preoccupied. If it's not your wife, it's, it's a video game. It's not your video game. It's a job. It's not a job. It's politics or whatever. It's some other distraction. It's all garbage. When Rome was losing, all they did was have endless circuses to keep you distracted from the losing war. They, the, the world we live in today, they try very hard to prevent you from creating your reality. You're constantly distracted by everything. And it's hard to focus on nearly anything. And, and they do that on purpose. For you to go stand out in the rain and protest, that takes focus. They want you distracted. They want arguments in the household. They want blacks to hate the whites, Republicans to hate the Democrats. They want us to argue with each other, for all of us to hate our neighbor, and us all to be so distracted and selfish and self-absorbed that we can't think beyond ourselves. That's what they're trying to do to us. And it's absolutely an utterly work. It works. There's, a very, there's very few of these people. And look what they've fucking done to the entire world. It's absolutely insane. Mm. And before I get offed, I'd never commit suicide. So let's, let's put that there. Yeah. But no, but it's crazy. It's really crazy. And I don't think I'm on a hit list because I'm full of shit, right? I'm some millionaire with a bunch of bitches, a bunch of cars. Tate's full of shit. I'm full of shit. Cool. But if you're still living inside the matrix, we'll talk in 20 years and see who's full of shit. Yeah. Because I'm free and I'm staying free. I don't want to change the system. I'm not out to change nothing. But it's just, it's remarkable to me that people aren't awake. It's, it's like because it's they don't incredible. teach you in school unless you seek this kind of thinking. Like I studied, everybody knows I say it a million times, but when I studied philosophy, you read these books by Baudrillard, these French thinkers, these anti-establishment people. You have to seek out these kind of thinkers to even have access to these types of crazy, crazy thoughts that aren't sometimes that fucking crazy as we learned in the last few years. I never thought in my life I would live in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never in my life. I grew up as an Angelino. Never. Yeah. And... The world changed so very I, much. I very haven't scary. even I haven't been LA in a long time, but I've only heard the stories of how it's gone down or whatever. Yeah, I mean, look, there's still uh, there's still great parts of LA. I still there's, there's love still, my fucking yeah, city. It's yeah. still eight one eight till I die. It's still yeah. like it's LA is still one of the great cities, but it definitely has changed. You can't act like it hasn't changed. Yeah, yeah. Like when people, a lot of people there. I mean, you'd have to be your head would have to be in the ground to not acknowledge that it's different. Yeah. What it's is different. it? Ostrich. Yeah, ostrich. That's yeah. it. Cowardice. Tell Cowardice. Ostrich. Yeah, this is ostrich. It's, it's an easy solution. Cowardice is an easy solution to everything. We can we can I move know. along. We can move beyond from COVID and talk about other things, right? But cowardice is an easy solution for nearly everything. That's why it's so prevalent. Because when you're a coward, you can make an excuse to do nearly anything. Oh, I should have done this, but maybe there's a risk of. There's always a fucking risk. There's yeah. a risk with everything involved. If you get to be a coward, now you have the excuse to do nothing. And that's what people want because they're all lazy fucks. Well, yeah. the good news is there used to be, in, in the 80s, the 90s, a great way to be a coward, right? You clock out, you go home, you have a Coke and a smile, you sit in your lounge chair, yep. and you watch fucking Friends, yep. okay? But even that life has been taken away. Yep. There is no middle class yep. existence yep. anymore. Yep. So now they're, it's like, what are you doing, dude? Yep. There's nothing for you now. It's Yeah, it, and, and as I keep going back to COVID, I don't want to, but... In fact, let's change it. I keep going back to COVID. I could talk about it forever. If you've listened to the show for a while, you know that I am obsessed with playing Best Fiends year-round. I love Best Fiends. I play it on every flight I go on. I am now up to level 155. Hello. I don't mean to brag. Um, pretty good at this stuff now. I love it. Um, it's great for the holiday season. It's a perfect pick me up when I need a break from all the holiday action. And you don't need to be online to play the game, which is the best. Um, best Fiends has it all an amazing storyline, collectible fiends, and tons of fun puzzles. No Wi Fi, no problem. So even if your holiday travels takes you off the beaten path, you can still play Best Fiends. Um, there's always a fresh challenge waiting for me when I need a mental pick me up. And also, it's not so crazy hard that you're like stressed out and bummed out by the game download best fiends free today on the app store or google play that's friends without the r best fiends the new year is a great time to focus on what's most important to you whether it's saving money by ordering less takeout learning to cook or prioritizing your wellness hello fresh is here to help with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm fresh produce that arrives within a week so you get convenience without skimping on quality. Skip the trip to the grocery store, saving you the wait in long holiday lines and ensuring you don't waste money on excess food. And you know what I love? It is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal, and it's actually, I think, better quality. 
And it's a fun thing to do with the family. Why not cook with your kids? Why not cook with the people you love? HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including veggie, calorie smart, family friendly, and gourmet options. I love HelloFresh because they help me save so much money and I love cooking with my family. Go to HelloFresh.com slash mom16 and use code mom16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Go to HelloFresh.com slash mom16 and use code mom16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. I'll show you something. Um, here's some uh, of the guys that also give like kind of <laughs> lessons on women. And I wanted your, <laughs> th- <laughs> your All right, thoughts on it. these. Okay. All right. So here's Let me take my jacket off. Oh, shit. Whoa. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's real now. Is it the gun, real. Show? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. the gun show? Uh-oh. Don't you dare bring those Texas. out. We're in Texas. We're in Texas. We got to, bro. We're going to see the, uh, what is it? You have the cobra on the arm, right? On the right. Oh, shit. That's right. And yeah, and can see. we discuss your accent as well, please? Yeah, it's fucked up. So I'm what see. is this? I'm, yeah, a, like, I'm a mongrel. Oh, shit. What are you? I'm like, a street dog. So you're from yeah. London, a little bit of London. And U.S. He's American. U.S. And then what else is like... South, we, we thought South Africa for a minute. South Africa? Well, yeah. when, at first when you couldn't, when because you actually have lived in different places, your accent isn't like clearly from somewhere. Right. Yeah. So it kind of sounds, you're kind of like, wait, I, I think he's British, but maybe not. Like, you know. Yeah, I was in America until I was about 10 between Washington, D.C. and this really awesome place called Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I was in Indiana and then I moved to Luton, England. Uh, and Luton has a unique accent because no one's from England. Everyone's from Iraq. So... It's kind of strange there. And then I grew up there, and then I spent a whole bunch of time in Eastern Europe. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's why it's, it's kind of messed there's up. There's everything. Yeah, different. And you brought the cobra out. Let's see it, dude. We've been waiting to yeah, see this for it years. It starts here, and it goes all the way down here, yeah. yeah. So oh, it's, it's shit. The right hand. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, the right it's hand. the power, right? It's the power, yeah. That's right. That hand okay. has delivered some fucking blows, man. We just saw Mr. Yeah. Germany. I wonder what yeah. he's doing now, because that was a good 10 years You hit him ago. right on the button, too. That it's, was... Fuck him. Yeah. I want... That was like 10 years ago. I, you know what? Okay. You know what? I'd actually, I, I'm, I'm petty like this, right? I'd love yeah. to like find him on Facebook, track him down, find, yeah. find his address, pull up in my Bugatti Chiron. <laughs> yes, I have one. Pull up out front in my $5 million car. Yeah. Like, hey, bro, just wondering how life's been since I kicked the fuck out of you. Because <laughs> my life's gone pretty good. I mean, <laughs> I got the Bugatti and a German bitch. You know what's about to happen to her. So what are you doing? Oh, you're fat now. Safe. Right. <laughs> See you later. Toodaloo. <laughs> you think I'm not gonna make a YouTube series on this shit? Keep yeah. watching Tate speech. Yeah. This is the future. Happy this New is Year. exactly what I'm gonna do. Happy New Year. All right, here's one. Tell me what you think of this guy. He has, I think, this is about his, what he looks for in a woman. <laughs> so you might cry because you can't have my talk, ladies. I'm sorry. You may fucking hate me for it. Been hated for it more than once. I am fucking one. Fuck you hard. Wicked. Tears them twat lips to pieces. Ooh. Red and ravish. Fucking crazy shit. I am father cock, bitches. You must be 120 or less. You must be solid minded. You must be fucking sexy. You must be grist, fucking sweet. I'm not going to go for it unless you're not. So that's what he, wa- he watches take speech. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh,. He's just, you know, he's just, he's a good list. 120 or less, dress sexy, um, kind of be compliant is yeah. what I got from that. You know the problem with this whole space? Because I kind of accidentally got thrown into this whole red pill girl pickup space. And I don't really think I'm there so much. I, I really try and focus on masculine excellence because a lot of the dudes in that space are trying to compensate massively. Like there's only so much game you can learn if you're mm. clearly a fucking dork, right? Yeah, right. If, when a nerd comes to me and goes, I'm a total nerd. I want to learn game. I'm like, bro, if you need to learn more than game. Cause you look, you literally, you look like a bitch. My girlfriend would beat the fuck out of you. How, so, do, you, how do you help that guy? Then, but, but he already knows the answers. How you help him is to tell him the truth. Cause he already knows what he needs to do. He's just not doing it. So what does right. he have to do? Just make a ton of money and it's not even about money and be successful you know what? and powerful. You know, it's not even about money. He's got to grow a backbone to begin with. You got to grow a backbone yeah. and you can do that by, if you improve your physicality, you usually improve your mentality along with it. Mm-hmm. And men are expected to be wise and interesting. He needs stories. You're not going to have stories unless you've taken risk. You need to get some balls. You need to get mm-hmm. some balls and live a life. I told him, man, go get on the on the train in Portugal and ride it for three weeks all the way to Singapore and think about what a fucking punk you are. And at least you'll at least you'll end it with a, some stories. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like you have plenty of time to reflect on what a bitch you are. <laughs> go into the bathroom and look in the mirror, look deep in your eyes, and say, yeah, I wouldn't fuck me either. 
Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Wait, what? What do you want? What game do you want? Wait, I looked you're, at you're scrawny as a motherfucker. Like, what do you want me to do? He has yeah. to look deep into his own eyes. Yeah, yeah. no, no. <laughs> you have to look deep into your own eyes. Yeah. And say, I would never <laughs> fuck you. Never. And that's that needs my to change. Part. I, well, that's my that's actually my brother saying. My brother Look deep bro- into your own eyes. My, my brother wakes up. That's, that's hateful as fuck, dude. I like that a my, lot. My brother wakes up Ooh. and before we train, he, he hands me a cigar and a whiskey. And he goes oh my God. He gives me this whiskey and he goes, Go to the mirror, look deep into your own eyes, and offer that man a drink. <laughs> What does that fucking mean? That's, that's really funny. That's though. fantastic. So, but but my point is, eyes. a lot of these guys are absolutely not really delusional, and and masculine <laughs> and masculine excellence is is genuinely the mental origin for all these things, right? You have to be very very realistic of who you are and what you're aiming. Well, for. let me tell you, this uh, this era does not want masculine es- es- excellence. Excellence. I'm raising two little boys right now. And I, I don't want to, I don't want them fucking weenie fight, yep. which is a lot of the reason I love Texas. Yeah. Cause it's hard. It's not, it's not easy. Cause, <laughs> cause, cause every single one of us, every single one of us to some degree is an empty vessel. We're all programmed. Yeah. To, you, there's no such thing as escaping the slave mind. You must just to some degree understand who is programming you and understand if you really want those characteristics. Most people are repeating, uh, opinions and i'm saying where did you get that opinion from they can't remember where they got it from they don't know who even told them they don't know why they so fervently believe in it they're yeah. just told they're programmed you need to genuinely analyze your brain defrag every single opinion you strongly have and identify where it came from and if that person has your best interest at heart and what they're trying to do especially with young men is program them because we're all empty vessels and what you have to do as an adult as a parent is to program your child stronger than all of society mm. it's not an easy job because all of society, from the YouTube videos to the TV shows to the school, every single thing is trying to program them in one direction. You have to combat that. And that's not an easy job. And if you just sit there and get lazy about it, you will fucking lose. We're yeah. all programmed. All of us are programmed True. to some degree. So it's, it's a scary thing. That's for this fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's delusional. Yeah. He's delusional on every level. And, yeah. you need to, and you need to hold yourself accountable. The reason I talk about women the way I do is because I hold myself to such, such a high standard as an individual. I don't make mistakes. I'm a professional. I know exactly how to act and exactly what to do. I do not need a woman to motivate me, to be my mother, to convince me to put the video games down. Please stop smoking weed. Da-da. Everything I've done fantastic, I've done completely and utterly by myself. I did it without you. My life's amazing in every single possible metric. Now I'm going to allow you to join it. And therefore, you're going to bend to my reality and my will. That's not me being arrogant and a psycho. That's me just being completely realistic about my achievements as an individual. That's a pretty good... Case. Cobra, I am exhausted. What woman can keep up with you? You so much energy. That's why I have a few. That's what I was gonna say. I, I, I don't want to take enough, it, my love. I gotta take it easy on them. Fuck. I'm a nice guy. You're very intense. Yeah, I'm a nice guy. You know, I'm like, listen, you've had your okay tomorrow. Boom. I <laughs> spread. I spread them out, do and you, that's me being kind. Do you tra- train every day? Every day. And it's just a, like it's just part of your routine. It's part of my. Now I don't fight professionally anymore, but now it's just part of my routine. Just forty-five minutes, an hour, whatever in the morning. Yeah. Just to, you know, it's part of my routine. Pilates. Yeah, yeah. What do you do, Spray? Yeah. Pilates. Pilates. Come on. Pilates. Um, well, I live with my brother and my cousin. Yoga. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I live with my brother and my cousin. I try and beat one of them up, but if, 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 but if you spar all the time, you get injuries or whatever. So I'll lift weights, or we'll we'll push the sled around, or whatever, whatever. Or yeah. we'll find we'll find something to do. But I I train okay. every day. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, he had That's a good, good. he had a good. Take, I think well, I was going to say this is Lord Fetsmoker. I think he has one more thing here. I strive for fucking perfection. Oh, sorry, perfection. He's stealing from. He must your be school. under 120 pounds for starters. Period. You were over 120 pounds. You were drunk on top of that. I just suck on my cock a little bit just because I'm a good sport. <laughs> I am an elite fucking force. Look at this neck. <laughs> I do not want to get on somebody that's not fucking solid. At least fairly solid. So, I like him. I love this guy. Yeah. Unfortunately, he passed away. Oh, I was about to invite him out to Romania. I was saying, let's go pimping. <laughs> let's go pimping, G. Can I have two more coffees, please? <gasps> oh, another... he had to fucking ask? Again? That was supposed to be what? <laughs> Unprompted. Yeah. Unprompted. Um, no, but yeah, look, there's a whole bunch of delusion in this space. And it's yes. not just these guys. There's loads of guys. And I have a load <laughs> of guys who are credible in the space who like invite me on and stuff. And I sit there listening to the things they want from a woman. And they don't understand the reality. The reality of the world is that beautiful women have all the choices in the world. If they have all the choices in the world and you're not competitive, how the fuck are you going to pull it off with a bit of gain? We also talk about money. I want to make something clear about money. Getting rich is probably the worst thing that can happen to the majority of men. Most men are not ready for money. 
And I say this because I was broke for a very long time, lived a very difficult life and then became rich. That's why I am because money amplifies. So if you're the man first and then you get rich, Absolutely. you're the man. Yeah. If yes. you're a punk and then you get rich, now you're Fuck. a massive punk. We were just yeah. talking about this before you came. Like, Thanks. Thank you. Wow. My Thanks, my friend. We were just talking but about it. It happens with crypto kids, right? I had one kid come to me, some 20 year old kid who caught a pump. Some stupid coin, whatever. He made eighty-six million dollars. Damn. And he came to me and he was like, "Tay, I need your help. That I have eighty-six million. Blah blah. blah. My life's still shit." It's like, yeah, because now, now you're just a sugar daddy to a bunch of hoes who don't give a fuck about you, and, yeah. and you're a robbery target, and you're just hiding. And like, like your life's over now. Like, the, you should have been the man first. You could have been a big G first. You can't even fucking pull a firearm. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, that's the worst thing that could happen to you because you're never. Now you're never going to want to work hard. You're never going to want to network. You're never going to learn the skills. Before the modern well, before the modern period of wealth creation, because in Hustlers University, I teach people how to make money fast. Anybody. I'll teach you how to make as much money as you possibly can quickly. But in the old way, the old world, the only way you could make money was by talking to people, networking, sales, influence, all these things you'd learn lessons along the way. By the time you had the money, you learned a lot about life. Yeah. But now you can skip all the lessons and just get the fucking money. You're right. And, and, and these dudes are a mess, right? So wealth is the worst thing that can happen to it's people. True. So we talk about how, oh, money attracts girls. No, it fucking doesn't. Because in, in the realm of a beautiful woman, everybody's rich. She, she will only go on dates with a man who has a nice car and pays her dinner. She may not know who's richer than the other, but in her view, men just have money. Right. I talk to beautiful women, like genuine tens. Oh, well, men have money. They, 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 they don't even consider some men are poor because they've never spoken to one. Yeah, <laughs> they don't know. Yeah. All men just have money from the right. sky. That's men a, just have money. That's a great point. It's, it's normal for them, right? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like having arms. Right? right? It's like, it's not enough to attract her. She just expects it to be there. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, you have money. And, and, and if you don't have money, she'll be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. So, so, so if you so, do. So she has to then choose between really the guys, they all have money to begin with. So now she's looking actually to the next layer. Completely. So yeah. now it's all the other qualities come it's in. given is so, money. So, yeah. mo so money will qualify you to try. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not going to attract a woman purely unless you're literally paying her a day rate and she's a hooker. Yeah. So people talk about money attracting women. I know a bunch of dorks with a bunch of money and no pussy. Yeah. Mm. Like, because I was like, because you're still a fucking nerd, G. Yeah. You're yeah. still a fucking nerd. Yeah. Like you, you're yeah. Just, God, uh, I missed that word. No, I, they, I like they are nerds. nerds. I use that word purposely. I know I miss it. It, it. It's intrinsic. It's like yeah, back to school. Yeah. You're a nerd. You're, you're a fucking nerd. nerds, I dude. was a nerd. I am a nerd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but you are. And, and money amplifies. I say this all the time. If you see a dude get out of a Lambo. <laughs> fucking and, nerd. Yeah, fucking nerd. If you see a dude get out of a Lambo and he's a skinny <laughs> little guy with glasses, you're like, oh, tech dork, total, total nerd. Yeah. If, you see a, if you see a guy get out of a Lambo and he's big, tall, strong, Cobra tattoo, big G, you're like, okay, mafia boss. It uh, amplifies. Yes. The Lambo <laughs> amplifies. It doesn't change yeah. who you are. And money's the same. Money's an amplifier. Well, because you were this guy before you had a lot of money. I suspect you you had your swag before. I miss being poor. I loved it. I loved being broke. I loved going out thinking, I need to find a bitch tonight because I need someone to sleep. I, I miss those can days. I, can I tell you how I knew this one was a winner, by the way? Tell me. So we met. I met Tommy Buns when he was just 23 years old, Okay. And I knew he was a fucking winner. I've said this before on this podcast because he carried himself like a fucking winner. We didn't have two dimes yep. to rub together for, yep. for quite a minute, my love. Yep. But I knew the way he carried himself, he was a capable man. I you know what I'm that. saying? Like, I respect that, yep. He always had a, the hustle, the vibe in him too. Like yep. he's not going to be some fucking loser, dude. I yep. knew it. I also, when I saw it, I was like, hey, bitch. And he did that <laughs> too. Like that. No, so. but, but you know what? That's, that's a really important point because we, the world often talks about fake it till you make it. And I'm like, no, there's nothing, be it. There's nothing yeah, fake yeah. about belief. Mm. There's nothing, I knew I was going to be the big G before I was the big G. There's nothing fake about belief. Right. I knew what I was going to be. Yeah. Like there's nothing fake about belief. So if you truly believe, then it can be carried and, 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 and women yeah. can detect that. Yeah. Women are always with guys with ambition. You don't need to have the money. You need to have the ambition, the they ambition. to feel it. Yes. And if they can feel it and they know you're about it, then that's enough. You don't yes. actually need the physical cash. No, that's what I tell girls when they're looking 20 year old, 30 year old women with me. How do I find, I go look at the guy that's got the hustle. I don't give a fuck if he's a garbage man, yeah. but he's got that hustle to be the best fucking, or maybe he wants to own a chain of garbage. It, it's yeah. it's what it's going to be later. 100%. Not now. Have Not you, now. By the way, do you know who Kevin Samuels is? Yes. You do? I know who oh. he is. The black guy with the suit. I love this guy's <laughs> stuff. It is his, here's the thing that I love about him. He's, he, he cuts out all bullshit. Yeah, yeah. He is completely direct. I think we pulled some of my favorite interactions with him, uh, with women. Winter is coming. No more hot girl summer. No more twerking. Once you're over 35 or 40 years old, what do you have? You got bad knees, bunions, and type 1 diabetes. 
<laughs> oh, this <laughs> he uh, this is him. Uh, I like when he Babe. actually does the he does the interactions with a woman who's like yeah. trying to get advice. Do you know? From him. Do you, but he made a really important point. And do you know what's so attractive about younger women? Because we a lot of these <laughs> dudes talk about fertility and, yeah. and looks and stuff. I don't actually think it's that. I think that in the modern world, in the in the days of old, right? You'd meet a woman, you get married, you'd be together, whatever, whatever. In the modern world, if I meet a girl who's thirty three <laughs> and single. I know the amount of dick that's been through her mm -hmm. before yeah. me is just simply unattractive. I don't care how nice you are, yeah, yeah. but you're 33 years old. Mm -hmm. How yeah. many men have fucked? If I get a 19 year old girl, I might be her second or third man, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be dude number fucking 29. Yeah. And all the trauma and heartbreak and bullshit <laughs> they put you through, you're going to try and bring to my door? Yeah. Like, well, my last man cheated. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Like, why is that my problem? So if you pick up older women, you have to accept. They've been on the carousel longer. They've had more fucking rides, more spins. Yeah. I don't want that shit. So you'd like 19, 20, 20. I want, I, the, the younger she is, Fresh and the, slate. the younger and the more beautiful she is, yeah. the, the more the less men she slept with. Another yeah. reason I like beautiful women is not for yeah. the objective beauty. I say this all the time. If I see a truly beautiful girl, I'm not like, wow, she's beautiful. I'm like, you know what? She has so much choice. That cunt is so, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that woman is so picky. Can't oh, use that word. Oh, right. It's like the caviar of women, right? Yeah. Like she's, she's so picky. Yeah. That she's going to be very, very selective with who she slept and with. And you like that. You like well, it. I like that she had less yeah. men. Yeah. Like the most beautiful women on average have slept with less men than an average chick. Because average so chicks true. are insecure. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, when I see a beautiful young woman, I know that she has a very low body count. And that and, and also. <laughs> no, but no. But the truth is this. <laughs> women's mentality is absolutely connected to sex if a woman sleeps with a bunch of men <laughs> yeah. it's harder to penetrate her mind and make her fall it in love is with unattractive you. too and it's unattractive it is. but if she's like <laughs> if she's had 30 dudes inside of her she, she really didn't think you know what this guy's so 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 special or she gonna think you know what he talked to me real let's go get a new guy and that's what they think right so they're much harder to contain and control whereas if a woman's only been with a few guys she's much more likely to fall in love with you be a better partner etc oh so you're afraid of losing not afraid the older one okay you don't first like whoa, whoa, whoa 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 you yeah, use the yeah, word afraid yeah 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 I don't like that word. Hey, feeling. check your fucking self. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so stupid. I don't like that word. Stupid. Because we. You don't like losing. No. Don't say that you're competitive. You don't like to lose. I don't like. You I, might no. lose the older woman. I don't like the word afraid. And, and okay. the reason I'm very, very particular with how I speak, the reason I'm very, very particular with the things I say, and I'm very, very particular when people talk to me and I analyze certain words is because we live in a world now where semantics are used to our detriment. People are using very, very selective words and they're using them to control the world. E.g. Pandemic. There isn't one, but they say it. So now it becomes true. So when you say the word afraid, it implies fear. Mm. Choice is not related to fear, right? I have a choice. I have options and I will not choose a negative option or a detrimental option or an option which is less favorable than, than, than the other one. That doesn't mean I'm afraid. But what is the negative option? Why is it negative? It's negative because the likelihood of her falling completely in love with you and staying loyal to you and, and really believing you're the only man for her after being through so much trauma and so many men and sleeping with so many dudes and having her heart broken and having those memories of her ex and all that crap she's been through is far less likely than meeting a nice, young, beautiful girl who hasn't been with many men. And she goes, you know what? This is the guy. I, I like him. Every woman who knows this and every man who watches this can be honest. Women fall in love with the person they lose their virginity to or their second or third guy. They really remember them. They really love them. Da -da. Any woman who slept with 50 dudes, she doesn't even remember who most of them are. She doesn't care. If a woman slept with a bunch of men before you, she's less likely to stick it out through a difficult period in a relationship. She's more likely to just say, you know what? New answers, new dick. That's a pretty and, good and, answer. And that's the truth. So why would Jeez. I put myself in a position? To no, be hurt. No, not to be hurt. To waste my time. Yeah. Like it's a time waste, right? Women who have slept with a bunch of men are more likely... I get, love you. What about those words, Cobra? <laughs> That's beautiful. Keep going. Let's go. No, keep going. Let's have feelings together. Now, if I let me make something clear. If I meet a beautiful 30 year old woman, I'm not saying I won't sleep with her. That's pretty fucking old. Yeah. <laughs> 30. I know. What are you crazy? I, I There's been times I was drunk, <laughs> but but uh, no, I'm not saying I won't sleep with her, but I'm certainly going to look at her and go. 30 and now you're just newly single like wh how have your life not in order yet yeah like, like wh what's you? wrong with you like yeah. and and it, and it really is true because everyone denies this i'm telling you if a woman sleeps with a bunch of men her ability to pair bond that's a real thing women who slept with a bunch of men they don't find a man and attach to him correctly they're always thinking uh, you know maybe what there's another I, I will say and this is totally politically incorrect too is that because we carry the repercussions Correct. of sexual conduct correct we're the ones left with the bag so to me Yes, I I was never into banging lots of. As what? you shouldn't be. 
Well, because you think you're like it's an unconscious thing. It's like, well, God, if this guy busts nuts in me, like so, he doesn't even like me. So you, I don't even know so me. you just so you just nailed you it. I want your jizz inside of me. Well, I don't you just even nailed know it. you. No, but you just nailed it. This right. is the exact point, right? Because you have to look at humans from a societal standpoint and an evolutionary standpoint. Evolutionarily, females found a man, got pregnant, and stayed attached to that man. Right. So it's women are not evolutionarily wired to be jumping from dick to dick to dick to dick to dick to dick to dick and stay and stay mentally sane. Men can do that. We can stay sane. We don't give a shit. Women, for the longest don't period of... nod your head, yes. <laughs> yeah, we can. For the longest period of human history, Stop women it. didn't do this. Don't do this. He's so happy. Tom's happy. This is his contentment. What are you doing to my husband? You need to leave, he's, sir. He, he's, he's scripted He's going to move to Romania He now. told me what to say. <laughs> but... but 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 no, it's true, right? So this, this pro, well, promis, promiscuity amongst females is is something that's exi- it's like fifty years old, but and I, it's, it's I don't brand know. new. And, yes. and women I'm can't the they're, science. they're not mentally evolved for it. For for five thousand years, they weren't that way. I here's the I thing: I don't care. We haven't like, studied. I don't enough. care, but I do find I honestly I do find it unattractive. Like when a woman's like, I've slept with fucking eighty. Can I tell you something? Ugh. But I find it unattractive in a male I who has that. the same, same behavior. Yeah, I, I was repulsed by men that would say, "Oh, I've banged fifty-seven. I'm like, something's wrong with you, bro. Yeah. I don't think that's normal for anybody to well, just body count. That's a good point. That's fucking gross. That's a good point. Now, I would. I think the strangest thing about that is that you'd tell a girl that. Like, I would never sit there with a woman. Yeah, right. I don't want to know. That's stupid. That's stupid. Yeah. I mean, is it true? <laughs> yeah. Of course. Probably. But I would never sit there and be like, yeah, da 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 because I think that's just that's just weird. It's, it's tacky gross. too. It's tacky. Yeah. yeah, it's it's gross. But I think I think I also think that women intrinsically, because we're looking at women from an evolutionary perspective and men from an evolutionary perspective, with a high enough value male, women don't expect monogamy and they don't expect Definitely it. true. No, they look at Chris Definitely They look true. at Chris Brown in the club. You think they're thinking he's gonna be loyal to me? Uh, uh, fuck no. That's they don't a, care. No, they don't gosh. care. They're looking for status. And like he has enough status, I don't care if he's loyal. So yeah, my but point it's true. is if you were single right now, if you were single and you're out and you meet a guy who's like, you know, a multimillionaire good looking, you know, masculine, whatever, owns a bunch of shit. You wouldn't be like, this guy probably hasn't been with many women. You well, that's I mean? a different ballpark. But I'm but, saying but you I'm might be, att- if you're attracted to him, you still be, you would, your brain tells you this guy has options. Yeah, of course. You know, so. And, and this is my point. And I think that, I think that women to some degree tolerate male pr- promiscuity because it's evolutionarily designed inside I of men. Don't know. And I no, it's no, I'm cultural. Not, it's, it's more c- cultural too. Like in Eastern Europe, for instance. It's more normal. Yeah. Yeah. France, normal. Yeah. America, no. No, girl. and I'm, I'm not, and I'm not talking about it from societal perspective. I'm saying just the fact that female promiscuity as a whole is is a very, very detrimental way to live your life as a woman. I don't think, I don't think there's any happiness in that. I think if a woman runs around jumping on dick to dick to dick, I think they genuinely. These are the people on the most Xanax, drink the most. They're the I saddest know. people. I They're not happy. I can't imagine They're it's not good for you. I and agree. those apps and stuff, I don't think it's good for humanity. It's not. Personally. Whereas it's I not think healthy. if a man is out there and he's sleeping with a bunch of chicks, I don't think it hurts him mentally. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. I do. Maybe it does. I know. Well, look at you. I mean, you're, ask me. You're perfect. Ask me. You're perfect. Does fucking all those bitches hurt you mentally? I don't want to ask. Ask. Look yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror. Deep in my deep eyes. Deep in your yeah. own yeah. eyes. I know the answer. You ask yourself. I know the answer. <laughs> deep into my own eyes. Wait, can I Andrew, point out? It's called. It... This is called Tramp Talk. Yeah. The show behind him is Tramp Talk, <laughs> which is fucking brilliant. Andrew, has it hurt you to sleep with all these women? Oh, God, don't make him answer it. What do you right. think his fucking answer is going to so, be, Tom? I think there's two ways to look at this. <laughs> I talk so much. I'm sorry. <clears throat> the men who are out here only trying to have sex with women and have no emotional connection, they're weirdos. A lot of this red pill, how to get girls stuff, a lot of them are like that as well. They're like the, the peak masculine uh, uh, life is just to have a bunch of women that you barely know. And that, yeah. that's stupid. That's fucking ridiculous, right? Every man, if you want to have a good life, you need to have a good relationship with a good woman. When yeah. you get sick, it's your woman who's going to care, not your boys, right? But you can love her and she can love you with all her heart. You can oh. love each other. You can be prepared to take a bullet for her yeah. and still fuck other bitches. That's what I'm God saying. Damn. You know what I'm saying? It's no big deal. It's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to do what we got to do what we got to do. So I've got, the, I've got the women who I really care but about and I love, but I've also got the other women who's just like... Okay, but what about... But we have children and stuff. What if... What if, your, what if your boys find out dad's a pimp? Oh, shit. No. My God. What, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, two I, little pimps. Can, can we move dad's on? pimping. Is there another clip dad's we can Dad's pimping. Show? Yeah, here you go. Watch Cobra, this. Yeah, I, I can't. I have a heart attack. I'm 5'3". How much do you weigh? <laughs> That's none of your business. I told you I was fat. Oh, okay. We don't play that shit on my show. <laughs> <laughs> you get your big fat ass on somewhere. <laughs> I don't deal with you big sassy ass broads. <laughs> I love him. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, he's the best. You think you can get out here and be like Danny's big ass? Go knock <laughs> yourself out. But I would be remiss to try to tell you, as an image consultant and as a person and a professional, that you can be five three and weigh so much that you don't even want to tell somebody how much you weigh and think you will get a man to marry you, a high value man. So you go ahead and go on back over and get your two piece or three piece or whatever you got coming from you know Chick Fil A or Popeyes. Or, yeah. <laughs> over. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, the best is the dismissive, like the mouse when he's like, "So you go in, uh, he's look away." No, but, but he's, but, you but he's right. Ass, bro. But no, but but doesn't that say a lot about the world we now live in, where when you tell some women the truth, they're flabbergasted? Absolutely. Uh, like, like, how are you flabbergasted by the fact that a man with options can doesn't I, want you? Can I tell you something now, Cobra Tate? That I thought for sure that people would hate fat models. Okay, I fucking abhor fat models. I don't want to see somebody that looks worse than me modeling the clothes I'm aspiring to be this person, right? You know what I'm saying? I ran, I asked this guy, we both know him. I go, do you like fat models? He goes, yeah, I love- Slave I love mine. Women. Slave mine, fucking lie. He, you know what, you know what it is? Let me tell you something about the world because I haven't told you enough yet. I know you think that this is supposed to go on for two hours or something. We just got fucking warmed up. We just got started. <laughs> Sorry, production staff. I'm not done. Let me tell you something about the world. When you're not prepared to fight, if you're not prepared to fight to defend an idea, and this is actually something you can uh, extrapolate to the, how the whole world works, right? Yeah. When you find men who are physically capable or with high testosterone levels, we're allowed to have ideas which are abstract because if someone disagrees with us, we're prepared to defend them. If you're a little bitch... What you do is you go through life and you say things that are completely socially acceptable because you don't want to ever have to defend your but point. But I believe this guy genuinely likes No, he's a women. punk. Yeah. And he saw on Twitter he's supposed to like it. So now he likes it. That's what he is. He's slave-minded. Because he's afraid to say something which he's going to have to defend. Who was it? I'll write it down for you. Yeah. Give, um, me, give me his fucking name. <laughs> I'm coming for you. I'm going to pull up outside you and I'm done with that German fuck. What's his name? Pussy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pussy. P U S S Y. He's not a pussy. He's not pussy. I, I know what he's saying. I know uh, what Andrew means. No, like, but you can, you can like a thick girl, whatever, whatever. I'm not yeah. saying that. But we're talking about these these women who are models who are just clearly unattractive. Yeah, I and, agree. And, delusion. And, and delusion. You know what the other one that's, that's well, fucking makes me bullshit? Crazy. This one really bothers me. Is when somebody, <laughs> sometimes it's a famous person, sometimes it's just a regular person, is overweight, <laughs> loses a bunch of weight, right? And then people go, um, you you know what though? You were beautiful. Oh, that's uh, a bullshit. Uh, and, and both yeah. you're beautiful now, but you were also beautiful then. And no, you, you go, weren't. wait a minute, <laughs> but that's not true. Yeah. Like you lost. First of all, you lost all that weight. That's great. Yeah. We should celebrate that. And now you are physically more attractive. But th but don't don't you see that when the Matrix and the people in charge of it try their very best to destroy objective reality. Yeah. When they deliberately yeah. convince you things that aren't true, when they destroy objective reality, yes. your mind is now fully open for programming. Yeah. Yeah. That is a woman because she says she's a woman. <laughs> yeah. That is attractive because they said, this is a pandemic. I work hard. Inflation is good. Inflation is good. Give me my fifth booster injection. <laughs> it's it's destro it's destroying your yeah. mind to the point where you're what? completely oh, open yeah. for programming. That's why they purport these lies. Yeah. They yeah. purport the fallacy to wipe your brain of any independent thoughts so they can inject it's, the slave no, it's, programming. It's, it's newspeak. It's Orwellian newspeak. They're not pedophiles. They're what? They're uh, a minor, minor attracted, attracted person. People? Yeah. <laughs> That, you know that's a I new call, thing? I call, I call them targets. That's what I call them for. Yeah. I call them, you know? Do you know that that's a new term that's for real? That's a new term, for real. Minor attracted person. Listen, I, I got bullets that need using, so yeah. it's not a problem. But but the, but this is the point, right? This is the point of the world now. That every single objective reality has been destroyed yes. in real time. Yes. There's no longer any baseline of humanity. There's nothing makes sense nothing. anymore. Men are women. Women are dogs. Dogs are yeah. men. I'm a panda. <laughs> But it's just like, and they're just injecting the slave programming all day long. All these slaves out here. And then I walk in to buy a coffee and the slave's like, wear your mask. I'm like, listen, <laughs> oh, I, I get I get upset by these things. That was like maybe Me two. Me too, I'm fired up. That was like two years ago. I'm going back to that coffee shop. My next Tate speech, next time I'm in Germany, I'm going back to the same one. And that bitch better hope to God he ain't working. So I'm going to walk in maskless. Do you remember me? He'll be like, no, but you're fucking about to. And I'm going to give him a nice three-minute tirade before the German police arrest my ass. Tate speech is coming. 
Fuck him. <laughs> Just after I visited the German, I knocked the fuck out. Then I go back to Spain and find Pedro. And this pussy, whatever his name is. Give me his name as well. I'm doing a world tour. I've had enough. <laughs> I need to do something. Look, look at this I shit. I know. Send me so to much Mars. for that question. Um, I use the term minor attracted person or MAP uh, in the <laughs> title and throughout the book for multiple reasons. Um, <laughs> first of all, because I think it's important to use terminology for groups My that brain. members of that group want <laughs> others to use for them. Um, and MAP advocacy groups, like Before You Act, um, have advocated for <laughs> the use slave of the term programming. They're trying um, to put it in my brain. They've advocated for it primarily because <laughs> it's less stigmatizing <laughs> than other terms like pedophile. This is haram. Haram. Send her to Saudi. <laughs> Let her repeat this shit. Haram. We need the will of God. We need Allah. Listen, I'm ready for the asteroid. I've had enough. Same. No, I am so ready. There are look, there's 72 virgins awaiting me. Just bring it on. This is all done. I've had enough. Oh. I, the slave programming. They're trying to put it in my mind. It hurts me. They're trying to inject it, and I have to I rebel know. against the slave. Everywhere I look, I can't even watch. Ugh. I know you guys are on Netflix. I can't even watch that shit anymore. If I see one more 110 pound woman beat the shit out of 50 big dudes, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. What are you mind. talking about? What show is this? Every show. Wait, 110 pound. There was some pound. show, CSI or some crap, and there's some Israeli Krav Maga girl in it. Yeah, and she's yeah. like, I'm from Israel. So, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. I'm like, bitch, I would fuck you up so fast. You ain't ready. I'm, grab, you ain't ready for me. i like, put me in the show. Let me be the bad guy. I'll show you he ya. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. You'll be on the fucking first plane back to Tel Aviv with a busted eye. I, <laughs> Bullshit. Can I tell you my dream? Bullshit lies. I wish, I wish every motherfucker that took down my fucking TikToks, every piece of shit that reports me to TikTok, that Cobra Tate shows up at your fucking house. Find them. That you need yeah. to give your Let's address and go. this motherfucker shows up. I'm doing a world like, tour. I would love it. <laughs> I'm ready. A troll I'm tour I'm and doing, just I'm doing a world tour. these fucking babies. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on YouTube. I'm going to say it anyway. I did actually knock on a door, a guy's door once on Twitter. You know this? <laughs> I no. wish. Oh, I love it. Did you it. really? Yeah. Good for so, you. Did you know uh, 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 DeAndre did this, right? No. Um, is, it, uh, <laughs> is it DeAndre? DeAndre. Uh, no, no, no. Not DeAndre. Deontay. Deontay, Deontay Wilder. Wilder. Ah. Deontay Wilder. Oh. Um, there was a guy who talked shit. And there, it's on video. This <laughs> oh, guy talked shit. Good. And Deontay Wilder showed up good. at a gym that the guy was at. He's like, no, no, Sick. no, no. Sick. This is going to happen right now. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. This is real. I good. love that. Yeah, yeah, this uh, internet troll. This, oh yeah, yeah, Charlie's on and off. Yeah, 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 dude. This this guy he this guy talked shit and then he chased him. He was like, "No, this is not over." He's like, yeah. "You talk shit to me." Good. Yeah. yeah. That's what the world needs more of. Because this yeah. guy and look, he's just fucking. Good. Well, then you won't talk shit no more, yep. dude. That's he, how. But that's how we used he, to do it. He, on tried, the he was like, "All right, over." He's like, "It's not over." So wait, I just wanted to highlight that. But you had a guy on Twitter. What? Talk right. Shit so to you? about three years ago, there is a liberal guy. I can't. For some reason, his name has escaped my mind. But if you look up banter teacher, he was an English teacher who banned the word banter in the class. He what? banned the word banter? What? Yeah, he's a real fat guy. Pure, super liberal. Um, what's his name? Michael something. And he was always begging for money on Twitter because uh, banter, B-A-N-T-E-R. Teacher bans banter. Look that up and you'll see it. Yeah. And uh, he was always begging for money on Twitter because, you know, the, the, right, the, the right wing guys have uh, Mike Wait. Stutchbury. That's him. Yeah. So this this dude, he was constantly crying on Twitter. I need mental support. Can anyone give me like a GoFundMe because of the right wing and all this crap, right? So he started running his mouth to me on Twitter because he didn't let me tell him the truth about the world, telling me I'm misogynist and all this shit, da 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 da, and just running his mouth to me. And by absolute freak coincidence, I didn't even try. Someone's like, you know, he lives in Luton, right? I was like, no fucking way. Which is where you were. That's where I'm from. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he lives in Luton. I was like, and then I was going back to London because I just bought a new Aston Martin Vanquish S. You know, one of them things. You know, you leave Romania on the jet. You go, you pick up your new Aston. What's the first place you're going to go? And I was like, you know what? By coincidence, he just wrote some more shit. Corporate date, misogynist, feminist. Da -da. I was like, fuck you. So I drove to his house. Let me see if I can find it. But I, I went and knocked on his door. And uh, he had a full mental breakdown. <laughs> oh, he had a full mental breakdown. And you, yeah. what'd you say to him? Well, this is the funny thing, right? Here it is. Let me find it. <laughs> Here we go. So he's blocked me now. So he used, <laughs> yeah. to, say, he used yeah. to say he doesn't drink, but this is me taking a picture of his trash can with all those wine bottles. It's like, why say you don't drink, you uh, alcoholic uh, fuck? So I'm at his door. So I, but I'm, I'm not a violent guy. I don't want to hit the guy. I don't want to go to jail, right? Yeah. I just want to talk to him. I just want to say hello. Like, you make fun of me all day. Can't I say hello? 
So I went and knocked on his door and he starts screaming out the window. I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police. I was like, bro, I just want to show you my new car. What's the problem? So I start trying to talk to him. The police turn up. The police rock up. Let me find the actual picture of me outside his house. because it's, it's, it's beautiful. Let me find it. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. So the police rock up. Um, and uh, what I said was very simple. I said, look, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I want to spread the word of the Lord. <laughs> I didn't know knocking on the I didn't know knocking on the door was illegal. And what did the police say? Well, well he's intimidated. So I didn't I touched the guy. I didn't know it was illegal. I just want to tell him the name of the Lord of the Lord. And they're like, well, go away. And then I got a lawyer. My lawyer is like, well, you've only been warned once. You can be warned four times. <laughs> I was like, yeehaw! <laughs> I'm coming back, Mike. I'm coming back. He actually moved house because of me. He did? <laughs> yeah, he left. What? <laughs> yeah, he moved house. <laughs> You should do more troll like. Uh, I told you I'm doing this. a world tour. I'm I getting warmed up. This. Yeah. Like there, I know there's only a matter of time until I'm banned from every single social media and I don't exist anymore. Da-da. It's fine. I exist in the real world. Right. In your nightmares, like Freddy Krueger. Oh, Tate's been banned for a year and a half. I wonder what he's doing. Knock knock. That's what. <laughs> I'm coming. I'll find the picture outside his house because it's absolutely beautiful. I just have to find oh. it. Now, so here's the deal, man, is that some people would accuse you of bullying. That's not bullying. I'll, I'll but he was bullying you on Twitter, no? Uh, literally all he all he did was insult me and all i wanted to do was bring him cr- closer to christ and he was upset with you by <laughs> on twitter about what your your views telling the truth about earth you yeah. know normal things yeah, yeah. just existing <laughs> yeah. oh you're, you're this you're that but this guy's this he's this it's like shut up stop being a little bitch i literally wanted to just record a video i actually was hoping to have a normal interaction <sighs> with him, i thought it'd be funny yeah God. i was i'm zero percent the guy who's gonna tra- attack someone i know i come across that way but i'm actually very intelligent i'm not gonna get fucking arrested for beating some guys on twitter so I wanted to just talk to him and record it and be funny. <laughs> but he crapped himself so instantly and so monumentally that yeah. it was just like became a, a thing. Yeah. I was I originally had Tristan filming and we were just gonna I was gonna ask him like why do you think I'm a feminist? Da, 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 da. But he just completely crapped himself. Mm. Really? It, oh yeah, like really bad. He was literally crying out the window, screaming on the phone, calling the police. <laughs> I was, and I, even the police officers, a man and a woman turned up. I said to the woman, like, come on, this is a bit extreme. Look at him, he's crying out the window. And she's kind of like, well, yeah, but, you know, he's scared. I'm like, no, this is just gay. <laughs> there it is. Bam. There it is. I love my new Yeehaw. car. <laughs> this is me outside his house saying, I love my new car. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> but I, I didn't do nothing. Like, I know uh, this is probably going to be in trouble with somebody. Listen, English police, you've arrested me enough. Right? I didn't do nothing. I'm trying to spread the word of the Lord. I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I really want to bring him closer to Christ. Yeah, That's my what's only wrong with intention. That's that my only intention. I ain't hurt nobody. Well, plus you have three more warnings. You're fine. It's like I zoomed in on his house number on accident. Oops. <laughs> uh, Oops. He's not there anymore. No oh, yeah, he's deal. gone. He's gone. <laughs> he ran away. Uh, what does he say? So just had these sent to me while waiting for police. Banging on our door was Andrew Tate, <gasps> kickboxer, and someone else. Someone else was my brother. Yeah. And he looked so yeah. That's, that's just him having a panic attack. But yeah, yeah, it was it was it was. This is a few years. That ago. honestly, like that has to be pretty scary if you've talked uh, if you talk yeah. shit to a fighter at your door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. But yeah. but but I think Mike Tyson <laughs> Mike Tyson said it right. He said social media has people comfortable with disrespecting each other without yes. being punched in the face. Yeah. In, the, yeah. in the olden way of man. I yeah. would never disrespect someone to their face unless I understood there might be a physical confrontation. Oh, Absolutely. Course. So you check there's yourself a, consequence. a little bit. Yeah. There's a consequence. There's, now, there's no longer any but consequence. But you learn that in fucking grade school. And you know now, if someone fucks with your kid and hits your kid and your kid hits that kid back, your kid will get in trouble. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Say for, for protecting themselves. And, and that's, once again, conditioning. They're conditioning you Crazy. to take, take the shit sandwich, do nothing better. But I have, I'll tell you this, I told my son, because it's the older one, who I told him, I go, that's okay. I go. Completely. If you get yeah. in trouble, it's okay. I'll defend so you. If it's anybody cool. ever tries to hurt you, you can you can hit them as hard as you want. I'll tell you a story. Yeah. I'll tell you a story about my dad. It, this story went viral on one of my Twitter accounts. I, I that got banned. Blah, blah blah. But um, when I was in school, I was on the bus on the school bus in Indiana, and there was these. I was how old was I? Six or seven? And there was these two kids who were maybe nine or ten who used to pick on me from behind, right? And he used to pick on me on the bus all the time. And I came home to my dad, and I said they picked on me. He goes, well, "What are you gonna do about it?" I was like, "Well, I don't know what to do. They're bigger than me." He goes, "You have a lunchbox." I was like, no. That was his answer. So anyway, they kept picking on me, kept picking on me. And after about 10 days, when they were picking on me, after about two weeks later, I remember, one of them slapped me on the side of the face and it mm-hmm. stung. And I turned around my lunchbox and smashed him clean in the face. And it was a black, it was a plastic Batman lunchbox. It was blue. And when I hit him, it splintered and it cut him. So blood squirting everywhere all over the, the school bus, right? 
And the two bullies are like, they, now they crap themselves because the kid they picked on all of a sudden just turned around and smashed him in the face. So I came home. When after I hit him, I instantly, it was just before, so as the bus stopped, I turned around, smashed him, and ran off the bus. So as I ran off the bus, I ran all the way home, like, like scared, because I just hit him. And I got home when I just had the handle of the lunchbox. That's all I had left. And my dad saw me, and he instantly said, let's go buy a new lunchbox. And we went to the Walmart, <laughs> and he said, I'll buy you as many of these as you need, son. And he bought me a new lunchbox, and that was the end of my bullying story. No, he bullied me again. That's he right. Didn't, he didn't ask me who they were. The school called. I don't know what he said to him. must have told him to fuck off. I never heard about it again. <laughs> But my, that was my dad's answer. Oh, my dad didn't come to save me. I kept telling my dad about him. He's like, no, fix it. Fix yeah, it. Yeah. And after I smashed him in the face, my dad bought me a brand new lunchbox. He goes, anytime you need a new lunchbox, let me know. Otherwise, you know what to do. And that was it. Yeah. That was yeah. the, and I was never picked on again. That's right. And I learned my lesson for life, right? Sometimes you, you, you tolerate X and then it gets to Y. You got to do what you got to do. That's right. That's, life. That's right. But these little fucking beta fucks don't learn those lessons because you're not allowed to defend yourself. And then they get in school. positions of power and then they look at f fucking Twitter accounts and like, he, remind, he reminds me of that yeah. dude. He reminds, oh, he's living his life. He's enjoying his life. Oh, yeah. he's, he laughed. He's smiling. Ban, ban, ban. Like, that's well, the fucking mind. Even if he doesn't agree with your ideas, who gives a fuck? Who the fuck who cares? cares? I know. It's, Why it's, does anybody give a fuck it's, 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 what anyone else thinks it's, about anything? It's full. It's so weird. It's full, full, full clown world slave mind. And I mean, look, the programming, the programming, it's it, it, like I, I create my reality very, very carefully. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even really read my own YouTube comments. I don't really because because it, it's just bullshit. Like, Why would I, you? It's I, terrible. I, yeah, I don't. I, I really have an existence where I only talk to the people in my network, the people I do business with, my brother. I live in a country which is sensible. I really am not around much of this, but I accidentally pick up bits of it. But I really try and create my reality very, very carefully because it's actually one of the things that's amazing to me. I said this the other day. Everybody understands that you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Everybody understands that. Dan Pena. Everybody understands that. <clears throat> but they understand that and still hang around with fucking losers. True. <laughs> it's like, that, is that not the ultimate mark of being a dumbass? If you understand that that's the truth and you don't create your friendship and create your, your reality, yes. then you're a loser. I had a guy join the war room the other day, my private network, and he joined. And we have, we have multimillions in there, multimillionaires in there. We have a billionaire in there. I, I bought a Bugatti purely to add Bugatti owners to my network. So we have Bugatti owners in there. We have guys connected to the point where I can't even say who on, on YouTube, right? A guy joined, he's 19, he ain't nothing. He goes, look, I know I don't have any value to give, but I'm just here to learn. And I, I understand that if I stand a chance of escaping the matrix, you're the man I need to be around. And I was like, you're absolutely intelligent. Instead of spending 19, sitting around playing video games, that's the smartest thing you could have ever done. Mm -hmm. he, his, his life's going to change forever, right? Because he's around people who understand. So all the people out here who sit there and go, yeah, you're the sum of the five people you hang around with the most, yeah, and then go hang around with dickheads. <laughs> you're, an, you're an idiot. But most people are like that. Yeah, Because they're idiots, right? You have to create your reality, and there's nothing wrong with saying to people, you know what, I've outgrown you. You know what, I'm on a different path to you. You know what, X, Y, Z. Sometimes you've got to cut people off because if you don't create your reality, they infect your energy. That is a big one, man. Big one. They, it's, it's like, it's negativity. It's yeah. being around it. I remember cutting off like a, a really good friend for a, a good period because of that negative draw. You know? A, a, a 100%. Yeah. Because as much as I don't want to sound airy fairy, I have noticed, I have a saying, and it's not a very, it's not a very remarkable saying, but I use it all the time. And that's dumb shit leads to dumb shit. And I say that for an example, like let's say you, you, you leave your car unlocked. You're unprofessional, you leave your car unlocked. Now it gets stolen. Now, now here's a police case. Now, that, dumb shit leads to dumb shit. So when I'm around people who do dumb shit or unprofessional mm. things or they're not smooth or they're not, they don't get their shit right or they're negative, that I refuse because it comes true. Yeah. It's like you, you make it true. If I hang around with your stupid ass long enough, all the stupid <laughs> shit you're true. talking about is going to happen to me. Yeah. So it's like you That's speak true. it into existence. Yes. Yes. So yeah. I refuse to be around it. Dumb shit leads to dumb shit. Everyone I talk to is such a fucking winner that when I sit around, <laughs> all I could do is accidentally win. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, bam, more money. Like yeah. all you can do is win uh, when you're around winners. It's true. It's true. It's, it's all you can do. So you have to you have to be very, very selective and you have to very, very carefully create your reality. And that's why I created the War Room because it's a global network, but you have to be global and you have to be online nowadays because if you're a normal dude living a normal life, you're never going to meet winners in day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Because they're all slaves. Yeah. So you have to find that guy in Singapore who's a winner, those two guys in Dubai who's a winner, one in London. Like it's, it's hard now. Yeah. It's getting harder and harder. But yeah, I, I don't tolerate negativity around me. I, I no. refuse to tolerate. It kind of reminds me, I, I knocked my own friend out once. <laughs> I, I knocked my, my friend out. So uh, Sparring or? Like, no, no, for real. For real. So uh, I, was, I was at my girlfriend's house. I'm about 21. I've got so many stories that make me sound like a psycho. I'm at my girlfriend's house. I'm no. 21. <laughs> anyway, her ex comes over with five of his friends and they had hammers because he was mad I'm with this chick. Oh. I'm with my boy 
And I'm like, what should we do? My friend's like, what should we do? What should we do? It's like, listen, this has been going on a while. He's been texting me that there's been a problem. Let's go out. Let's just deal with this. So I go out with my friend and the, the ex goes to me. I w listen, uh, starts threatening me with the hammer. You just have to apologize. He wanted me to say sorry for taking this bitch. So I ain't saying sorry to you. Because if you say, because you, you capitulate, it gets worse, right? So I was refusing to say sorry to you. And my friend next to me goes, well, why don't we just say sorry? You're on, there's, it's five against two. And now the guy on my team is acting like a coward and inspiring the enemy. I turned around and punched him so hard in his fucking face. Wow. I knocked my own friend out cold. And you know what those five dudes did after that? Shit themselves. They're like, Tate's nuts. He just knocked his own boy out yeah. before the fight starts. But I, you have to dismantle the coward next to you if you stand a chance. You can't be rolling with cowards. Cowards are going to, they're, they're more detriment than anything else. If that fight went down, do you think he was going to help me? He would have just fucking run away anyway. Yeah. So what do I need him for? He's just a, he's just a mascot for my enemies. Now he's just, he's just helping the enemies out. Jesus. So you have to create your reality. I'm not saying you have to run around punching your friends. But the point I'm making is you have to create your reality that everyone on your team is at least aiding you and benefiting you. If you have any cowardice or negativity around you, it's going to drag you back. Those five dudes were scared of me until that fucker started saying we should say sorry. Then they all got really brave. Yeah. He made them brave. So I had to teach them and him a lesson. I obviously never spoke to his stupid ass again. Yeah. He called the police and everything like a pussy. Yeah. Mm. Assault. Shut up. I've wanted to, uh, I wanted to fucking do what you just did to my staff so many times. <laughs> <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> you know who I'm talking to. I can see through the glass. No, the people watching just can't see, but I can see. I know. I know. I know which one I can see on his face. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Get I get it. Yeah, I, I get see. it. You can see. I get it. Mm. But no, you need to create your reality. And, and that's another thing that the biggest mistake people make in the world. You're hanging around negativity and cowardice. If you're going to a, a, a dinner and your friends are like, well, you know, this new variant, it is pretty oh, scary. <laughs> and, and you're sitting there, then you're a fucking dumbass. Fuck him. Yeah. Get out. Go sit with people who have been like, you know, what? I've been traveling the world this whole time and the variant's fucking fine. Yeah, yeah. And you'll, you'll be amazed. Yeah, right? yeah. You'll be amazed. Absolutely. Uh, how many cars do you have? 23. Oh. Do you have a favorite? It's like having a favorite woman. They're all good at different things. Yeah, right? Yeah. How many cars do you have? Not 23. <laughs> um, I have a few, but not, no, it's not, it's not up to that level. I, um, you have a Lamborghini? I have a Lamborghini. Evo. I have an Evo. Um, Huracan Evo. Just so you know, if you ever take your Lamborghini out and you see a bear, watch out. Bears are strong. Shit! Oh, shit! <laughs> shit! <laughs> shit! <laughs> Mate. What? Don't, don't. Shit! Man, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Shit! Ah, the, ah, the bears shut up. Dude, ah. off the hinges, just right. ripped that thing and, off. And, and you know what? Romania actually has the most bears in Europe. And when you Did, yeah, really, when you drive in the mountains, when you drive the trans, there's a really famous road. If you Google it, if you can spell this, it's called the Transfiguration. Uh -oh. T R A N S F A G A R. It'll come up. Transfiguration Highway. And um, if there you it is. If, if 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 you drive the Transfiguration. On images is surround there's bears everywhere whoa wow. that's cool you've driven that road i drive it I, yeah there's a video on, there's a picture on my instagram me dude that, that looks amazing and there's no speed limits oh yeah. dude yeah, i'm gonna have you know to he's a, going to romania i'm gonna have to make it you just heard it if you load up my instagram you'll see a picture of me on the transfiguration my seven i have a 765 mclaren you have a 765 i have two of them the <laughs> <laughs> Coupe and convertible. I couldn't that is, decide. That is the one of the. That's one of the craziest things I've ever driven. I actually think that is insane that someone can just buy that. I'm like, this is it's, too it, crazy. It should be illegal. It should be illegal. Oh, it's incredible. So there, there's my new purple one that's spec. You can see that's my 765 convertible Spider. It's beautiful. Yeah, that that comes in February. I just bought that one. And then um, if you scroll down a bit, I've got a DBS there. Yeah. There's the there's the. This is how we drive in Romania. I click on that Lamborghini video. <laughs> This is this is kind of up in the mountains a bit. You see, there's all like the little church things and yeah. stuff. So I'll show you quickly. This is how we're driving out there. Because there's there's basically no there's no there's no traffic laws. <laughs> so yeah, we, we're, yeah, we're, having, we're, we're, having, we're having fun. So <laughs> we're having fun. Welcome to Romania. Yeah, yeah. no you... front number plate, just like whatever. <laughs> um, Are exotics pop, like? Do you see them a lot, or just the ones you have? There's a, there's a lot of mafia money out there. there is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Lots the of, Russians, yeah. yeah. There's loads of there's loads of supercars out there. Yeah. But um, if you go back, scroll down. That's my alien, my favorite pistol. I bought an alien. It's only 500 <laughs> in the world. That's what I'm packing. Any of you people want to get fresh? You want to catch me on the street? You can catch you can catch the bullets. Yep. Catch me outside. Catch, catch me outside. I, I shoot first. <laughs> I warn later. Yeah. I'll, I'll warn your corpse. So next. Sorry. You can down. just go paging through them. <laughs> I've got. There's my jet. There's my. Uh, there's, what kind of jet do you have? Yeah, you own a jet. I've got a Phenom 300, right? Wow. I've got a Rolls Royce black badge. 
Uh, that's a War Room guy. That's a 488. That's my 720S. There, there's, there, there, there you go. Uh, the middle row on the far left. There. This is my 765 on the Transfiguration. You see the road in the background? Yes. Yeah. That's it's, gorgeous. So driving on that road, I mean, first of all, that car on that road is terrifying. Oh, yeah. It's scary. <laughs> yeah. The 765 is an incredible car. It's I had one for fast. a few days. And I that's was like, the this, one? That's the one where I was this like, this is nuts. too responsive. Yeah. It's too quick. Yeah, I, you're right. You should have to do a special license to drive that car. Yes, yeah. I agree. It's it's incredible. So I have, I can't even remember all 23 cars I have. It's That's a hard. good problem to have, it's man. It's hard. But um, <laughs> my my Chiron is in its final stage of, of completion, so my Chiron gets delivered in February. So Congratulations. Exciting. Man. Thank you. But I, I actually bought that car for the network, not for the car, because I don't think, I've driven it, and the, and the 765 is more fun to drive. Chiron's not fun to drive. Really? Nah, four-wheel drive, heavy planted it's 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 good it's fast but it, it, there's no wildness so it's very just like yeah, easy anyone a girl could drive it yeah that's the worst i know when women could drive them can like, i tell you i hate the women can drive I period I so do i yeah i don't want to drive yeah. drive me around dude yeah i don't but like yeah, it it's easy but a 765 if you want pure excitement is the most exciting car i agree you know what's funny i think if i met you 10 years ago i probably would try to fight you on some of your views now after i've had a couple of kids and i'm middle-aged as fuck i'm like <laughs> Dude, I don't want to run the world. I'm just tired. <laughs> like, let the boys do it. Seriously, like being in second place, it's kind of great. Well, it's it's it, it's amazing. Well, I'm being serious because like I get to stay home and raise our babies. If I want to go do stand up, I do it. But like, dude, you fucking that's do beautiful all this bullshit. And that's you know the way I mean? that's the way it should be. It always <laughs> it always amazes me when great. a woman goes. Should we delete that? I, <laughs> no. I mean. I, but just be calm. You know, you get older and you're just like, I, it's too much work to run the world. Why do I don't want to do that? It's amazing to me that women call themselves independent and they're out here working in a job for a man anyway. Like, why were you independent? Like, now you rely on a company or you rely oh, on Oh, you a mean your, your employer is still yeah, a like, guy. Yeah, yeah so it's like it's stupid. Or like, I'm independent. I have an OnlyFans. You need dudes to send you money. Like, the whole thing is ridiculous. Like, well, that's interesting too. Yeah, yeah you're like, still. You're still, because men and women exist, but together, and there's no way you're going to completely ex escape the male influence. But my point is, I think the happiest existence a woman can have is and women always confuse this because they think i'm saying find any man and be submissive no i'm saying find a man worthy of respect worthy of submitting to don't submit to a fucking bum don't be an idiot but if you find the right dude and he's taking care of you and you get to stay at home and raise the it's kids a great life yeah it's a great life like I what's know. the problem with it i don't yeah. i don't it, that's that blows so many minds on and, and people are like you can't say that why can't i say that i'll pay for a woman to live and take care of her in every possible way what's negative how am i a horrible misogynist for saying that my woman doesn't well, have to I slave. Well, I think it was like, other how stuff. How am I bad? Of yeah. like, she should clean up on She should. <laughs> we just, I'm Wait, out. But Cobra, if you've got money, hire a fucking housekeeper. I have a housekeeper. So then let her clean up. Why does she it does. Win? But sometimes I have to remake mess. If Listen, <laughs> my woman is, is begging for the chance to prove her loyalty to me. <laughs> she wants me to give her the opportunity to show me that she's such a fantastic female. And I give her that opportunity by what making a bunch of mess. Yep. That's right. Clean that up. Two coffees. Yeah. Ignore that bitch. Don't worry. Your tits are better. No big deal. Boom. And, and that gives her the chances to show me that she's yeah. truly ride or die. Yeah. That's right. That's what she wants. She's like, Andrew, thank you for fucking all them women and still coming home to me. I really appreciate that. That shows me that we're so strong. We're never going to break up. Look at this. Amen. Uh, there we go. Tom there, is like there we go. gospel. There we go. It's yeah. no big deal. It's, not, it's no mean, big deal. It's not a big deal. This has been a fucking learning experience. Oh this my has God. Been I'm enlightening, like... um, entertaining. I mean, I had high expectations, but you exceeded, exceeded them. Exceeded them on this. Thank you very much. I yeah. appreciate that. Um, I want to give you uh, one last repetition. Like, tell again where people should go. Where should they go to follow you? Where should they go? Where should they go to, you know, get more Tate? All right. So I am uh, on Instagram at Cobra Tate. That's where I'm most active. Okay. Uh, you can find me on there. And then on CobraTate.com, I have a newsletter. I'd recommend you sign up. And then if you're serious about changing your life or making any kind of money, you know, it's amazing. I, I have Hustlers University. It's $49 a month. There's me and 17 other multimillionaires from my private network teaching people how to make money. And I've had people come to me and go, oh, yeah, you know, but how do I know it's not a scam? You will go to school and spend $150,000 on a degree about business, learning from a dude who doesn't have a business and doesn't have any fucking money. But when a multimillionaire says, I'll teach you how to make millions for $49, you're worried about a scam. <laughs> how stupid are you, right? Like, like how dumb do you have to be? How much social proof do you need that I know how to make some money, yeah. right? So if you're not a complete moron. It's if like you, being a woman, it, it's yeah. fucking stupid. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. female shit, right? That's beta male garbage. Yeah. I don't need to scam you at 49 bucks, my friend. I have plenty of money. So if you're not a complete idiot, you can join Hustlers University and you can make some money. And then if you're actually genuinely serious about escaping the matrix, we have the War Room Network and they're both fi findable on CobraTate.com 
I'm on my newsletter. I'm on Instagram. I tweet now and again now, but I'm and on YouTube. Anymore. You're on YouTube too. Ah, YouTube at Tate Speech, and I also have Tate Confidential. <laughs> have you ever seen that channel? What? I don't, I don't. Have we? Where's that? You don't see Tate Confidential? On I'm asking them. What? Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think what? we've pulled anything from there. Tate Confidential. What, what the you, fuck is wrong with Tate you? Tate Confidential is my daily lifestyle vlog. What the fuck? So you get to see the website or it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Look at it now. Take confidential. What are you fucking doing, guys? There, man? You get take confidential. You get to see my daily life, like what I'm doing and stuff. What? The I uploaded an episode today where I invited all nine of my girlfriends over the house at the same time. Well, what? let's see it. Look right here. There you go. I got caught cheating by nine girlfriends. So right now my house is being renovated. So we're living in this temporary house. So don't judge the house because our house is being renovated. That's okay. just, that's okay. my brother is Trump. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, I gave a, so yeah, our house is being renovated, but this is, we upload this twice a week and this is our daily life of all the things we're up to. Oh, so, there's your bro? Yeah, yeah, that's my brother, yeah. So I have a little rant at the beginning. I complain about how femme-centric systems control the world and I'm tired of men being scared of female feelings. Mm -hmm. Then we have some sparring and if you skip about halfway <laughs> through, we invited all our girlfriends over to the house at the same time. This is my brother saying he's going down with the ship and then it shows the scene from Titanic where he goes down with the ship. And that's just all our girls are over the house. Yeah. Like I said, this is a temporary house. My house is being renovated. Right. But uh, across the next 10 minutes, it descends into crying, tears, oh, cat fights. Oh, no. All of it's all there. It's all there. It's all I this mean, my life. It's all there. Who's not going to sign up for this? Who Subscribe right that? now. Yeah, yeah, take confidential. Yeah. Man, so I can't wait to go to Bucharest. Yeah, this is all yeah. our chicks that uh, and, and me. I, I, start, I got to the point where I thought the only way to control them was to tell them I could do yoga fire like Dalsim. Yeah. So I, they were just trying to talk shit. And I was like, listen, yoga fire. And they're like, what does that mean? So I had to keep him in check. Oh, God. So God. Tristan's loving it with all his girls. They all kind of got along for a while. This they all got drunk and they were friends, and then they all worked it out, and it kind of went. It went they all wrong. like sweet girls. Yeah, yeah it was it was girls, fun. Yeah. It was fun. So that's take confidential. So we, we we show our lifestyle twice a week on there as well. There you go, man. I'm hooked. I'm in. I'm in too, dude. I can't thank you enough for coming. Yeah, uh, thank you so the much. The jets fueled up. So where do you head from here? I'm gonna bounce to Prague. To Prague. Hi, Prague. Lovely. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna go check out Prague, and then I'm gonna go to London for Christmas, and then I'm gonna go to Dubai. And after that, I'm probably gonna, I have some work I don't want to do, but I probably have to go to Thailand. And after all of that, I'm gonna go to Warsaw, then Bucharest, and I'm staying there all summer. Sweet. That's the plan. Summer in Bucharest. That's the plan. We'll Beautiful. link up somewhere, man. Hey, I'm waiting yeah, for you bro. guys in Eastern Europe. Anywhere, anywhere from Latvia, Estonia, all the okay. way down to Bulgaria. It's it. I have it on lock. You okay, tell me what you homie. need. You need a passport. You need a gun. You need bodyguards. <laughs> bears. You, yeah, you need bears. You need Lambos. Yeah. Army tank. We're coming. We're Draw We're me coming, a text. Dude. I got the, I got the connections. No problem. I'll Let's do it. You're the man. Uh, Cobra Tate, thank you so much for coming today, man. We really appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks for having me. You're the best. Thank you. <laughs> See you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.